Ladies and gentlemen, Boswell Media Sports presents Friday Night Football. Boswell Media Sports presents Leak Academy Rebel Football. Now, here is the voice of the Rebels, Philip Palmer Tree. It's week eight of Leak Academy Football on Friday, October 5th. Last Friday night, the Rebels picked up their second win in the last three tries with a 37-20 triumph in Greenwood against Pillow Academy. L.A. outscored the Mustangs 20 to nothing in the third quarter to run a three-point advantage out to a 23-point lead. For the third straight week, passing attack was cash money for Leak. Sophomore QB George Wilcox completed 20 of 30 passes for 276 yards, three touchdowns, and zero interceptions. And two Rebel wideouts racked up more than 100 receiving yards. Junior Matthew Nowell kept up his productive streak with seven catches for 124 yards and two scores. And Junior Mathen Weaver added six receptions for 101 plus a touchdown. Tonight, the Rebels' road trip stops in Pelahatchie for a District 2 bout with East Rankin. The Patriots come into the year with higher hopes, but the experience they have on the offensive side of the ball has yet to change a lot of numbers on the scoreboard or in the record book. Like the Rebels, East Rankin is 2-5, and five, and they need a district win in the worst way to get out of the division cellar and get into the playoff picture against a young Leak Academy team that looks like it's finally turning the corner. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the TNK Farms Wood Miser pregame. I'm Philip Palmertree. Billy Steen is our studio producer. Scott Engel will join us shortly. We all thank you for listening on Cruising 98, the Cruising 98 mobile app, and streaming live at kicks96news.com. You can watch tonight's broadcast on the Edinburgh Drugs video stream. That's available at kicks96news.com. Clicking there takes you to the Boswell Media Sports YouTube channel. Tonight's broadcast is powered by Central Electric Power Association. As always, we've got a lot prepped for you before we get to that 7 o'clock kickoff. I'll give you the Prince Oil starting lineup. Scott Engel will help us check out the key matchups in tonight's game between Leak and East Rankin. But first, we're going to visit with the Rebels head coach, Brian Pickens. All that and more straight ahead as the TNK Farms Woodmiser pregame continues from Boswell Media Sports. Before you begin those do-it-yourself projects outside your home or business, be sure you know where your underground utilities are located. Always call before you dig. One easy phone call to 811 can protect you from injury and expense. Plus, it's the law in Mississippi. Make the call and avoid serious or fatal injury. For more electrical safety tips, contact Central Electric Power Association. Serving you since 1937, an equal opportunity provider and employer. Baptist League Rural Health Clinics have a variety of health care options with primary care, pediatrics, and women's health. Providing care at three locations in Carthage, Walnut Grove, and Madden. Call 601-267-1470 today to schedule your appointment. Extended hours and Saturdays are available at our primary care clinic located in Carthage. Baptist League, making your health care our number one priority. You can't get much for five bucks these days. Unless you go to Wendy's for a $5 biggie bag. Get your choice of double stack, junior bacon cheeseburger, or crispy chicken sandwich. Plus four-piece nugs, junior fry, and a small soft drink. All for just five bucks. That was smooth, wasn't it? That's how you're going to feel when you get that biggie bag at Wendy's. U.S. price of participation may vary. West Side Body Shop says, let's face it, stuff happens. And when it does, they can take care of damage as small as a chip in your windshield, all the way up to full collision services. Insurance claims are always welcome, too. Just be sure your first stop is West Side Body Shop in Philadelphia. They also specialize in truck accessories, including toolboxes, visors, Nerf bars, and wenches. They make your ride look cool. West Side Body Shop, just off Beacon Street on Waterview Lane, right behind the Huddle House in Philadelphia. What is the value of an independent insurance agent? We don't work for any one insurance company. Instead, we work for our clients. We sell insurance from multiple companies, and that means at South Group Cox Agency, you always have an expert on your side who can find you the best policy and rates for you and your family. Now is the time to come by and let us at South Group Cox give you a free quote. Open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. South Group Cox Agency. 
207 West Main Street in Carthage. Welcome back. We resume the TNK Farms Woodmiser pregame. Leak Academy and East Rankin are warming up and getting ready to meet in a big MAIS 5A District 2 match. And the Rebels head coach, Brian Pickens, joins us on the line. Coach, thanks for being with us pregame. No, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, first segment, we're always checking the rearview mirror. And there's some things we like uh, that we saw last Friday night as we went to Greenwood. And the Rebels defeated Pillow 37-20. to Had a big third quarter explosion to take control of what was a closely played game in the first half. But, uh, Coach, for the third straight week, this passing attack has, uh, has yielded some big plays plays, critical plays on third down, and uh, seeing a team that can both uh, move the ball, I think, uh, systematically down the field, but also, uh, you know, throw it over the defense. Yeah, we, you know, our offense is one that, you know, I tell you know I tell our guys all the time, you know, it's an offense that you didn't have a lot of fun with. Uh, you know, we have the ability to, uh, to stretch you both vertically and, and you know, uh, horizontally, uh, you know. With George, you know, we can get those balls, you know, out there on quick outs, uh, you know, uh, quick bubbles. And then, you know, we have the ability to, to stretch you down the field on, uh, you know, deep routes, posts, you know, uh, go routes, things of that nature. So, you know, it's an offense that, uh, that you know, as a coach, you can have a lot of fun with it, uh, you know, but we still have to, you know, still have to be physical. That's something we still preach to our to our special guys up front is, uh, you know, no matter how much you like to throw the football and, and spread it out, you have to be able to run. And uh, that's something that we, you know, we stress every is that you know we've got to always have the ability to just sometimes uh just just get up in there uh get get just get just get nasty and, and run the football you know like you know like the you know uh like the old days and so you know that's that's something that uh, that, that we stress but uh, but no you know we think our kids are i think our kids are having fun with the offense now uh, you can see it even in practice uh we we try to practice at a, you know, at a high tempo uh we have the ability to check out of stuff if we don't like it so you know it's a very intelligent group very hard working group and uh you know i tell like you know i say it every week you know like i told you, you know, I, I knew from the from first day of, of summer practice that we were going to be able to have fun, and uh, and you know, we're really starting to starting to see see all that hard work uh, pay off on Friday nights. Yeah, and we're seeing uh, last Friday night good pass protection. That of course makes life a whole lot easier for George Wilcox. He completed 20 of 30 passes for 276 yards, uh, three touchdowns, no interceptions. And I want to come back to that in a second. But to talk about the line play, also Jason Morgan and I, calling the game, noted a lot of times where uh, I thought we did a good job uh, blocking out at the edge and uh, making some uh, making some things happen in the run game as well. Yeah, you know our line they, they work extremely hard. Uh, you know every day uh, they they you know they do the same fundamentals every day uh you have to make a lot of stuff just a habit for me and uh, they're doing a good job getting us on the edge uh you know running backs uh they 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 do a good job of when they get to that edge they can make something happen so so we're doing some you know some um you know some things that are strengths and our lines allowing us to do that because it's hard to get on that edge you know you're you're now you're you know as i always say inside game is you're taking you're taking a man and moving him where he doesn't want to go well now you're really trying to take a guy who's been told all week you you've got contained and now we're asking this this lineman to to step out there get his hand placed where it needs to be and get this guy turned inside so that we can get to that edge and do all that without without grab you know so it's a lot of hard work by those guys you were talking about the protection they're doing a good job and you know a lot of times people don't really know what goes into pass protection uh you know you've got uh you know people get real you know um sophisticated with their you know with some of the things they do so our linemen have to be able to not only take maybe this gap they have to be the exchange gaps so they have to be able to come out from from the line and and, and protect the perimeter and, and you know maybe all week you weren't the perimeter guy but now because of something they're doing they're they're occupying the perimeter guy, and you know you've got to you know bucket back and and, and take a, a backside rush or, or you know or, or or an inside linebacker or something like that. So they not only have to be physical, but they have to be very smart, and then you have to be very aware. Uh, you know, footwork's so important for O line. You always hear you know big guys and all that kind of stuff, but you know their their feet their feet have to be uh, uh, you know have to have feet like like running backs. Uh, you know because if their feet die, now you've got a guy that's getting a getting a full full run full heads you know you're kind of standing still so uh there, there's a lot goes into it so when you see this quarterback's not getting sacked uh it's not just because you got big guys or or, or they fit up or something or, or they were just meaner than the other guy that means that a lot of times 
they were stronger, they were tougher, they were smarter, they were more aware. A uh, lot goes into that. So, you know, you, you know how I am. You know, you get me talking on O-line, I can talk for days. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the, those guys do a lot. And, and I just, you know, I always, I always want to mention that because, you know, it's a, you know, like I said, it's a, sometimes it's an unappreciated position that uh, as a coach that you have to appreciate them more than anybody. Uh, you know, yes, we love seeing that ball go down the field or receiver make, you know, a, a you know, big catch over the middle and score from 80 yards or, you know, George take that ball and throw it, you know, 40 yards through the air. That's fun. That's, that's exciting. And, and there's a lot of skill involved, but when you understand what, what it took for him to have those, you know, those, you know, we always say you, you got to give us, you got to give us four seconds. And, uh, yeah. and those guys are, those guys are coming and they're trying to get, they're trying to get by you. And uh, so uh, again, my, you know, I got to give my love to, for, to that old line up there. <laughs> yeah. And then that, as you said, makes life a lot easier for the quarterback. And we've seen this stretch here where sophomore quarterback George Wilcox in the last three games has thrown 10 touchdown passes, just one interception. You got to love that ratio. Yeah, George does a good and He's done it all year. George is, George is a good game manager. I know people may see big arm or, you know, uh, or he throws the ball hard. And that's, that's, super, you know, that's, a, that's a skill that, uh, you know, you never can take for granted. But he's a game manager. Manager. He's very smart at what he does. Uh, he takes care of us, and uh, you, you know, a lot of times when you when you talk football and and, and you do you, you know you talk stats and 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 when I was a younger coach, I probably talked stats and I talked big plays. And but as an older coach, you appreciate these these little things. Uh, you know that you've got a quarterback back there that you're you're telling him you, know, you want him to throw this many times during the game, this many plays he's throwing. He's a sophomore. He's got to take care of the football. He can't just sling it out there and hope for the best. You know he's he's putting the ball where it needs to be, or he's you know or he's just eating that football. You know he's just saying okay, you know maybe we got to throw it away, maybe we got to take a sack here because I don't want to do something stupid with the football. And and he does it. Uh, you know it's kind of like what I just said about the offensive line. Uh, that you know they're heads of group. They take care of you. And so an offensive line, just like a quarterback, quarterback's not throwing the ball away. Offensive lineman sees things and, you know, comes off one block, you know, to, to, to take a, you know, take a, a delayed stunt out, you know, that nobody saw, but it was the, you know, it was the key to, to a play happening. So, so they take care of the, they take care of the protection. George takes care of the football and, and, uh, you know, our other guys, they just, you know, they, they catch it or protect it, you know. Well, coming up after we take this quick break, we're going to get down in the three-point stance and talk about defensive line play with the Rebels as the Team K Farms Woodmiser pregame continues from Boswell Media Sports. Register to win a 70-inch smart TV during the end of summer savings sale at Woodstock Furniture Value Center. Bedrooms plus free mattress, $7.98. Living rooms, just $6.98. Dining sets, only $3.98. And queen mattresses, $1.99. Kings, $2.99. Plus, it's all backed by our low price and same-day delivery guarantee with no credit needed and no money down. Only at Woodstock Furniture Value Center in Meridian, Philadelphia, and WoodstockValueCenter.com. It was my turn. I oversaw the ordering of our family reunion custom t-shirts. I had no idea what I wanted, but the girls at In Sports were so helpful. They showed me several ideas and colors that made my decision much easier, and the prices were very reasonable. Thank you to In Sports for filling my order quickly. You'll always be my go-to for personalized t-shirts. Check out their Facebook page to see more cool things they personalize. In Sports, Beacon Street, Philadelphia. Neshoba County Co-op knows that opening day at dove season is one of the most anticipated and popular hunting days of the year. It brings family and friends together. Dove season's one of the first hunting opportunities of fall as the long and hot Mississippi summer ends. Get on over to Neshoba County Co-op today. They've got everything you need to make the big day a huge success. Neshoba County Co-op, 338 Main Street, Philadelphia. At Pelahatchie. TNK Farms Woodmiser is Mississippi's Wood Miser Sawmill Equipment Dealership. TNK Farms Wood Miser sells the complete Wood Miser equipment line from small personal sawmills to the industrial equipment lineup. TNK Farms stocks parts and has experienced factory trained service technicians with both in shop and mobile service available. See TNK Farms Wood Miser to start your sawmill business today. Credit cards are accepted for all services. Like them on Facebook. TNK Farms Wood Miser, just off Highway 25 at 1128 Liberty Road, Louisville, 662 803 4332. 
Welcome back. This is more of the TNK Farms Wood Miser pregame Leak Academy and East Rankin about to kick it off from Pelahatchee. The Rebels head coach Brian Pickens is still with us. And coach, we want to take a, a closer look at uh, the play along the defensive front of uh, the Rebels. And if you will, talk about uh, some of those young men and their growth through the season. Oh, you know, D-line, uh, you know, that's another group I got a lot of passion for. You know, when, when, I, when I was, I was a defensive line coach. And uh, so, you know, this is probably one of the most mentally tough group uh, of kids you're, you're going to see. Uh, you know, every play, you know, we were talking about the O-line. You, you know, everybody knows that, you know, my my appreciation for O-line. But my D-line appreciation is pretty strong, too. Uh, you know, these guys are getting down there. They're, they're hunkered down. They've got to they've got to come off football. Uh, you know, they, they've got to be mentally tough and, and, and aware of things. And, you know, it starts with the snap. You know, they're, you know, they can't get used to hearing cadence. You know, they have to go on movement. So now you're having to go on movement. So you have to be very aware of when that guy moves, I got to move. And then when he moves, I got to get my hands on him. And, you know, I can be double teamed. I can be uh, trapped. I can, you know, there's, you know, uh, you know, scooped under. There's a lot of things that, that go on, and these guys have to maintain their gaps. And it takes a lot of mental toughness to maintain those gaps because if those gaps stretch, they got to, they've got to carry that gap. If that gap you know, squeezes, they've got to squeeze with that gap. They've got to continue to maintain that gap. So, our, so uh, you know, our, um, our, you know, our linebackers can make plays. You know, I always kind of give you a little a little saying, but you know, there was there was a saying by a pretty famous wrestler that used to say, "Know your role and shut your mouth." You know, that <laughs> yes. comes from none other than Ed Orgeron when he coached the Rock yeah. in Miami. He was a D line coach, and it yeah. was "Know your role and shut your mouth," meaning these guys are are in the battles every play, and their job is to make sure linebackers can flow and get over the top and 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 make their play. So, so you know, they they've got to stay so disciplined. Guy squeezes down, nobody touches you. Well, you can't go running out of football because you're probably going to get trapped. So you now you've got to squeeze down and look for who's going to come block you and then take that on properly. So, uh, so like I said, these guys got a lot going on and they're kind of like the line. Uh, well, they're just like the line. They they're in action each and every play, and so uh, they're, they're a group that sometimes they get appreciated enough. Or, uh, but uh, you know they you know and and you know not only do they take on the run, they have to take on you know guys that weigh a lot of times they're outweighed up there so they're taking on guys that may weigh 280 and they may weigh 200 and and they've got to keep from getting moved by these guys and and do all this and then when the quarterback passes now they've got to get upfield maintain pass rush lanes they can't just come just however people think you know pass rush is just you just get out to football no you've got to maintain pass rush lanes to prevent quarterbacks from scrambling out quarterback does get out now you're the guy who's got to chase them down with everybody hollering that you didn't chase him fast enough you know there's a lot that goes on with these guys so uh so they're they're a group that i really appreciate some of the guys that are up there uh, you know, we got uh, Hagen Bobo, who's, you know, been up there now two years, uh, just a big physical kid. Uh, you know, he takes care of our interior side. A lot of times you'll see him line up at nose guard. A lot of times you'll see him line up at the three technique. Uh, you know, he, you know, he's our, you know, he's our, what we call our big D lineman. And, uh, you know, he's responsible for maintaining gap control and, uh, you know, keeping that, keeping that interior, uh, you know, uh, where the where you know they don't have any big running gaps right there inside, and then uh, uh, and, and like I said, just and then you know I'm gonna say this about it about Bobo, he's just a very tough kid. He did uh, you see him uh, get double teamed? I've seen him get trapped, and you know he just you know he comes back, you know he just comes back for more each and every play. I mean you, he's not phased by stuff. Uh, like I said, just works extremely hard in there. Uh, a lot of times I just enjoy watching him watching him perform in there because uh, yeah, I know everybody else is watching the ball carriers or balls, but uh, you know, I, I watch him in there sometimes, and uh, you know he's you know he's battling, and you know he, he sets up uh, a lot of times when there's a no gain. A lot of times it's because of something he's done in there. He might not be called out for the tackle, but he might have just taken on uh, two two offensive linemen, and uh, they couldn't get off to to a linebacker. But he does a great job for us interiorly. Uh, we've also got Owen Hitt. He's a junior. Uh, Bobo's a junior also, but Hitt he's a junior. He plays defensive end. Uh, when we go to a format for a lot of times, we move him down. To to the one technique. <clears throat> He's more of a speed guy coming off the edge for us. 
And, uh, you know, very, very disciplined kid. I'd say that's one thing I'm going to say about Owen. Very disciplined. Uh, you know, as far as traps go, as far as pass rush lanes go, uh, you know, does a does a great job for us in there as far as that goes. And then we've got uh, John John Donovan, uh, the other defensive end. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he's a senior and uh, just a really active kid. When I say active, uh, you know, he's got a motor. Uh, you know, he comes off that football. He's disciplined with it, though. He's not, you know, he's not taking himself out of plays or, you know, opening up gaps. He's, he's But he's got a motor. He takes care of his, his area. And then where he's dangerous, when everything's taken care of, he's, you know, squeezed down, there's no trap, whatever. Now, you know, he's made a lot of plays for us in the, you know, in the backfield because once that's, once once he's maintained his area, then he'll, that motor just carries it straight to the football. So we've basically seen him make some uh, some big plays for us, especially on like zone plays, things like things like that. That. Uh, we've, uh, uh, you know, we try to we try to do some rotation. We'll run guys in there like uh, Carter Pig. Now, some of these guys I'm going to forget about because the most important thing we try to do, especially early in the season, is do a lot of rotation. And we feel like if the offense has been out there for a while, we'll rotate a lot of guys. And, uh, you know, it's not that I'm trying to leave it. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of times these guys are working D-line. And so the first person you see will send them out there and just say, look, go in there, play the, play the five, play the three, play the nose, <clears throat> because we just want fresh legs. We want, you know, we want to get those offensive linemen a fresh set of legs that they've got to now try to block. They've been maybe standing over there a little fresher. Um, Pete Peoples was, you know, the one of the guys that well, was an end and we'd rotate him around. But, you know, Pete, unfortunately, got, got a, a injury. Uh, he's recovering now. So uh, we're glad to see everything went well with, with him and, uh, uh, you know, look forward to getting him back out there next year. Pete was a junior, so he'll be back out there with us next year. But, uh, you know, we've, like I said, I, I mentioned Carter Pig earlier. Uh, we've rotated, uh, I think, uh, McDill in there some. We've uh, rotated some of our linemen, oh, Ben Jackson, our, our split in, tight end. He'll come in there a lot of times at the end. To, you know, uh, a lot of times we're on pass rush, something like that will bring him in there. Uh, you know, we've brought in uh, Tanner Wallsworth, Carter Wallsworth, another one that Carter, Carter had – had an injury, but he'll be back. Uh, you know, towards the end of the season, he's he's doing well, and he'll be he'll be back with us. But I know Carter's been in there. You know, it's it's hard sometimes to think, and I know, like I said, when we get off this show and we'll think, dang, I didn't I didn't mention you know old such and such. But uh, you know, it's not that I'm trying to leave them out. It's just we do try to <clears throat> rotate a lot of guys in and out. Because we, like I said, it just goes back to that freshness. That, uh, uh, but like I said, that group does a great job. And then we've just recently went to a four man front. We've uh, uh, Grayson McDonald. Grayson actually went for D lineman, did a good job for linebacker, but he's a big, thick uh, guy that uh, we would drop down at the end sometimes. If we want to go from a from a three man front, four man front, we just take Grayson and drop him down at the end. And, and Grayson, just uh, you know, uh, the best thing to say about Grayson, he's like a technician. You know what I'm saying? He uh, he, yeah. you know, he maintains everything, but he's got that linebacker mentality that if everything's maintained, he'll go make a play for you. Uh, that uh, you know, just sometimes just build out out athlete somebody make a play for you so uh but yeah we've uh, uh you know we got a good group and and you know thing is except for uh the you know the guys most guys i've mentioned will be coming back next year so it's like i said it's it's a group's going to get better and better up next to look at keys to success in tonight's game against east rankin academy as leak academy football continues i sure do like my new hunting rifle i bought it over at ozark ag when i went in they had such a great selection Took me a while to make up my mind. I have it sighted in now, and I'm ready for the big bucks. Tomorrow, I'm going back over to Ozark Ag and stock up on ammo. While I'm there, I just might check out those deer stands. Hey, honey, I know you're listening. Make sure you shop for me at Ozark Ag. They're on Highway 16 West in Carthage. Moore's Pharmacy in Carthage, Sebastopol, and Walnut Grove appreciate you, their customers. We have a beautiful selection of gifts with free gift wrapping. We are one of the only pharmacies around to offer compounding and woman's hormone replacement therapy. Moore's Pharmacy accepts all insurance, including Medicaid. Our two-lane drive through and prescription synchronization will make your visit very convenient. Come see us. We have the shortest wait time in town and a professional staff to assist you. Moore's Pharmacy, Highway 16, Carthage. 
TNK Farms Wood Miser is Mississippi's Wood Miser sawmill equipment dealership. TNK Farms Wood Miser sells the complete Wood Miser equipment line from small personal sawmills to the industrial equipment lineup. TNK Farms stocks parts and has experienced factory trained service technicians with both in shop and mobile service available. See TNK Farms Wood Miser to start your sawmill business today. Credit cards are accepted for all services. Like them on Facebook, TNK Farms Woodmiser, just off Highway 25 at 1128 Liberty Road, Louisville, 662-803-4332. We were celebrating a birthday, so we took the family out to dinner at a steakhouse. You may have known it as Lee's, but now it's a new building with a new name. The same great chef and owner, Artie Reed, and Hometown Prime. My beef filet was cooked perfectly, and we can't wait to go back. Steak, seafood, the best sweet tea, and of course, homemade desserts. Delicious. For daily specials and hours, Google Hometown Prime and like them on Facebook. Hometown Prime is ready for you. Highway 21, Sebastopol. Welcome back. Final segment of tonight's TNK Farms Woodmiser pregame as we get you ready for Leak and East Rankin and head coach Brian Pickens uh, still on the line with us. Uh, coach, what are the points of emphasis tonight to uh, get this? important district win as we come down to the final three regular season ball games. Well, as always, you know, prevent the big play. Uh, last, last Friday, we did a great job of that. Uh, we did give up to big plays at point emphasis again, you know, we talked about, okay, you know, we're eliminating some of them, but our goal is to go out there and give them no big plays. You make them drive the football. And, uh, um, you know, so that's, you know, it's going to be number one till I don't see it. Then it'll be number three on the, on the list of, you know, prevent the big play, but, uh, you know, we've got to, you know, we've got to cut the big plays out. Uh, big, we've got to eliminate those, make them drive the football. Uh, nothing is just, just be more physical. Uh, like I said, they've got a big offensive line. Uh, we can can't let them out physical us. We've got to be more physical than they are on defense and, and on offense. Those, those same guys will be over there. They've got a big D-line. Uh, so we've got to be physical up there. I know you sometimes people don't think, you know, passing's physical, but the pass protection is very – and then, you know, we've got to be able to run at those those big guys. And uh, we've got to make something happen on the ground. So so physical, you know, definitely, you know, number two. And then, you know, uh, play sound in our special teams. Uh, I think, you know, we're, we're getting there. Uh, you know, we didn't have any big plays on our special teams. Last week, we didn't give up any big plays on our special teams. Uh, now, had a good night, field goals, extra points, everything was good. The punt was good. So we've got to maintain that. Uh, you know, we've had some, you know, we've had some, you know, special time. And uh, last Friday night we didn't. So, you know, now we've got to, you know, do it two weeks, you know, two weeks in a row. It's kind of like, you know, we talked about uh, when we are right there going into the fourth quarter. You know, I said, you know, you know, you've, you've never laid down. You, you've, you've fought all the way through. You fought four quarters every game we've played this year. But now it's fixing to be different. Now you got to play with that lead. Now you got to play with that lead. And so one of the things I'm giving you four, one of the things is what can we do after we've played with a lead, we've done some things correctly. Now we've got to make, you know, we've got to be consistent with those. You know, we've got to be consistent with everything that we're doing. You can't just have a big play one time or stop a big play one time. You've got to be consistent with it. And sometimes you think about game, but I'm saying I'm saying week to week now. We've got to be consistent with the things that we're doing. The things we've gotten better at, we've got to continue to get to do that and get better along the way. Coach, we hope all that uh, preparation and execution, of course, leads to a victory against the Patriots tonight. But uh, we'd like you to take in a couple of minutes we have left, uh, take us behind the closed doors of uh, the locker room in a post-game situation. And uh, what are some of the things that uh, coaches have the opportunity to do with uh, with, with these young men in uh, when the ball game's over, the clock's at zero, whether we've lost or whether we've won? Well, you know, the, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in there and, and you know, I doubt when I was, I always says when I was young, you, you know, you come in there and you would talk about maybe, you know, you know as coaches, a lot of times we're, we're, we're too negative. I'll say that. Every coach will say that we're sort of too negative. So you come in there and you, you know, you kind of give a list of your grievances. I don't do that much anymore. Uh, you know, I come in there, I uh, discuss the big things, how we played, you know, were we ready to play? And, you know, like I said, that's a loss or, or a win. You know, I say, you know, you guys, you know, if it's a big win, I'll tell them, you know, where it started. It did, you know, it didn't start, you know, at 6.50 Friday night when, when we ran out of the helmet and looked, you know, fired up. No, it started Monday when we came back and went in that weight. You know, how did you work out in that weight room? 
you know, how did you, how did you prepare Monday mentally? Were you paying attention when we were introducing you to all their formations or we were introducing you to how their defensive base front lines up or, and then the stunts that come off of that, you know, and that's where it all starts. It starts every Monday when you come back in there and, you know, we'll discuss that. And sometimes on a loss, you know, you discuss, you know, how you practice that week, you know, did you give yourself the opportunity to be successful by the way you practice? Those are the knowns. Uh, you know, a lot of times, as coaches, you, you know, I don't, when I say I don't talk about the negatives, I don't, you know, say we didn't block because, you know, it may not have been as clear what you saw. Now, with the videos at halftime, you do see a lot more, you know, so you can discuss those things. But uh, sometimes the second half, you still haven't seen the video. You might see it on the sideline some. But uh, there can be small things that, that you know, weren't really your issue. This was your issue. So I try to be careful of that because, you know, they're, they're leaving out. Um, you know, you want them to, uh, you know, you, you want to know exactly what, what either went right or what went wrong. Uh, so like I said, is, you know, and you're hoping as a coach, it's a lot more congratulations you prepare good uh you know and, and and a lot of times you are either a and i always tell them you know especially after win enjoy it you go enjoy it this week now you know next week we've got next week next week's going to take care of itself uh but come back in monday ready to go but enjoy it uh on a loss you know you tell them hey you know it's, you know, it's gonna it's gonna sting but we've got to get over it. we got to get back monday so you try to get them even ready a little bit for the next week and then uh you know after that we get our prayer uh we, you know we get our team prayer afterwards and um uh, and then from there a lot of times and it, it depends on the 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 level of the injury but from there then that's when uh david will a lot of times take the guys in there and he'll uh you know do an injury evaluation uh somebody you know that's when you put the ice on uh they're you know they're getting tr- changed and ready and and as coaches when you come out of the locker room they're they're doing their injury stuff and as coaches now you know you're you're uploading the film and uh, kind of let everybody clear out uh, if, you know maybe if you're at home a lot of times you're getting stuff off the field uh uh, you know, talking to your wife, your kids, whatever, whatever. Uh, you get that stuff off the field. And then when about the time the stadium clears out, uh, we come back in the coach's office and that's when we'll, uh, we'll discuss the game as coaches, uh, when everybody's, when everybody's gone, uh, we'll, we'll discuss the game as coaches. Well, you know, what went right, what went wrong. Uh, and, and then from there, get the film set up and uh we'll start uh, you know the breakdown of that night's game and uh, you know Nick said that's some people say why would you watch the game afterwards but you know we you know it's fresh on our minds uh we know why we did things immediately then and so we take notes we write the things down that we've got to correct going into next week uh we write the things down that that uh that were correct from the week the, from the previous week and make sure that that stays correct and make sure that stays where we want it and um you know, like uh, during that time, we'll also set up our film exchange with the other team. And so, you know, because of huddle, you, you, you go, when you upload, you, you load up your films for that team. And, and uh, so usually we, by the time we get done with, with that, with watching our game and, and making the notes on it, then a lot of times if the film exchange has occurred, we will actually preview the next week, uh, discuss a little bit about that. Nothing in, nothing in detail. We just kind of discuss the next opponent. And, um, uh, then from there, usually, you know, kind of clean up a little bit more and go home. That's right. Lather, rinse, repeat. <laughs> you That's right. For the That's next right. week. Well, Coach, thanks for being with us. And uh, hope we have a, uh, a jubilant, happy uh, locker room scene when we're done uh, tonight after this game with East Rankin. Thanks for being with us. All right. Well, thank you for having me. All right. Stay with us as e- Leak Academy football continues from Boswell Media Sports. Before you begin those do-it-yourself projects outside your home or business, be sure you know where your underground utilities are located. Always call before you dig. One easy phone call to 811 can protect you from injury and expense. Plus, it's the law in Mississippi. Make the call and avoid serious or fatal injury. For more electrical safety tips, contact Central Electric Power Association. Serving you since 1937. An equal opportunity provider and employer. At Wendy's, you don't need a psychic to tell you your hamburger's gonna taste great. Excuse me? Because every square hamburger is a sign you're getting the best. Did someone say sign? Four corners of hot and juicy fresh beef that make deliciousness its destiny every time. Hold on. I'm getting... 
fresh beef. When you want the best hamburger, Square's the beef. Choose wisely. Choose, Choose Wendy's Dave Single. I am a psychic after all. Fresh beef available in the contiguous U.S., Alaska, and Canada. What is the value of an independent insurance agent? We don't work for any one insurance company. Instead, we work for our clients. We sell insurance from multiple companies, and that means at South Group Cox Agency, you always have an expert on your side who can find you the best policy and rates for you and your family. Now is the time to come by and let us at South Group Cox give you a free quote. Open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. South Group Cox Agency, 207 West Main Street in Carthage. Carthage Veterinary Clinic, how may we help you? Hey, I have a new puppy and I need to bring her in for vaccination. Oh, what's her name? Ellie. We're so glad you called for an appointment and look forward to meeting you and Ellie. This is Dr. Brooke Bobo and we at Carthage Veterinary Clinic are glad to schedule you an appointment for you and your pet. That way we can give you the time that you deserve. Carthage Veterinary Clinic, Highway 16 West in Carthage. Find all our contact info on Facebook or Google. Now, Bob, when we started the Bring Your Kid to Work Day, this wasn't exactly what we had in mind. I'm sorry, but they're my babies. We're about to go grab lunch and then head to the farm. Well, where are you headed? Rosebud General Store out there in Rosebud on Highway 487 East. Nothing but the best for my babies. They got everything you need for your farming family. Well, your calf sure is sweet. Does she have a name? That there's the cow patty. Whoa, whoa, let me get this straight. You named your cow patty? No, sir. It's what you stepped in. Ew. Rosebud General Store, Highway 487 East. Boswell Media Sports. We resume the TNK Farms Woodmeister pregame as Leak Academy and East Rankin are in the locker rooms after completing their warm up drill, and they're going to kick off in under seven minutes for an MAIS District 2 5A matchup. We want you to remember you can watch tonight's broadcast on the Edinburgh Drugs video stream. A link to it is available at kicks96news.com. And tonight's broadcast is powered by Central Electric Power Association. Billy Steen is our studio engineer. John Alden Crosby is operating the action camera. I'm Philip Palmertree. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll bring in Scott Engel in just a minute. The captains are heading out toward the middle of the field. Cade Marble, Charlie Brantley, and Braden Hall are heading out to represent the Rebels with uh, meeting up with four East Rankin captains. And while they're doing that, and Scott will keep an eye on the coin toss for us, we'll run straight into tonight's Prince Oil starting lineups. On offense, Connor Moore at center, sophomore 5'10", 265. The guards on the left, flanking him, John Wyatt King, sophomore 5'11", 255. On the right side, freshman Tanner Walsworth at six foot tall, 227. The tackles flanking to the left, Hayden Jenkins, junior, 6'1", 228. And a senior on the, excuse me, a junior on the right side, Sean McDill, uh, six tall, 235. Tight end, we'll see some action uh, there from Ben Jackson. He'll also be out at, at wide receiver, some 6'3", 198. Major Chandler, the freshman, 6'1", 218 at H-back. The receivers, will see quite a few out there running patterns and catching the ball. Math and Weaver, one of them. Six foot tall, 145 junior. Matthew Nowell's been on a very productive run of late. Junior, 5'10, 141 at receiver. Jack Harkins, junior, 5'11, 136 at wide out. Charlie Brantley will double at receiver and running back. Senior, 6'1, 145. And uh, that's become quite a group to try to deal with <laughs> for opponents. And uh, we'll present a challenge for the Patriots tonight at QB is. QB1, sophomore George Wilcox, six foot tall, 225. Specialist Seth Martin, the holder, and he's punted the last couple of weeks. Reese Atkinson was practicing, and he's available tonight as well at punter. He's a freshman. Matthew Nowell will kick extra points and field goals and kick off. Ben Jackson, the long snapper. On the defensive line, senior John Donovan at defensive end, 5'11", 175. The other end, junior Owen Hitt, six foot tall, 176. Occupying the middle, Hagen Bobo, 6'1", 240, junior. We talked about him with Coach uh, Pickens and that entire group actually a few minutes ago. Grayson McDonald at outside linebacker, 6' foot tall, 197. Kobe Kemp in the middle, sophomore, 5'10", 190. Tyler Winstead, junior, on uh, the other outside backer spot, 5'10", 157. 
And Camden Marbles moved down from safety to linebacker in recent weeks. 5'10", 152, leading tackler on the team. Safeties, Matthew Nowell, Jack Harkins. We mentioned them earlier, both juniors. And the corners, Joshua Gray, sophomore, 5'9", 140. And Braden Hall, senior, 5'9", 146. Those are the starting lineups. Real quick, uh, coin toss report. Oh, sorry there. Here That's you go. fine. We're in the house now. Leak won the toss, deferred to the second half. Patriots will receive heading east to west. All right. Well, Scott and I will preview tonight's matchup for you after we come back for this break. Kickoff coming ahead as Leak Academy football continues from Boswell Media Sports. When dealing with something as complex as taxes and payroll can be, you can turn to Weaver Tax and Accounting to make things easier. Their professional staff works diligently to make sure your business and personal returns are complete and finished in a timely manner. Weaver Tax and Accounting will also execute your bookkeeping and payroll, bringing you the best in tax services since 1979. Weaver Tax and Accounting, 20 South Street, Sebastopol and 109 Chadwick Avenue in Walnut Grove. Total Pain Care's mission has always been to reduce suffering, increase function, and provide a better quality of life for every patient. Dr. Eric Pearson and Dr. C.C. Martin are committed to treating patients with the highest standard of care. Total Pain Care has full-time clinics in Meridian and Philadelphia, providing a convenient option for Neshoba County and surrounding areas. Total Pain Care, located in the Medical Arts Clinic at Neshoba General Hospital, here to help you get back to living your best life. Is this a familiar sound that seems to be never-ending? Money for this, money for that. Don't worry. East Side Pawn and Gun to the rescue. Take your pawn to them in exchange for the loan you need to help you through unexpected seasons. Confidentiality will always be respected when you do business with East Side Pawn and Gun. So what are you waiting for? Stop the fretting and get on over there. East Side Pawn and Gun, Highway 16, Carthage. Hello, Rebel fans. It's time for kickoff. Moore's Pharmacy welcomes you to an exciting night of Friday night football. Moore's Pharmacy takes great pride in supporting Leak Academy Rebels, the perfect place to start your weekend. Okay, Rebels, let's kick it off. Boswell Media Sports. Leak Academy and East Rankin about to kick off from Moody Davis Field in Pelahatchie. We appreciate Rosebud General Store, Sebastopol, for honoring the late old ball coach Gilbert Barham by creating the Gilbert Barham Color Commentator's Chair. And we're glad to welcome back Scott Engel to that spot. Uh, we missed you last week in Greenwood, but uh, good to have you back. And I think two storylines come out quickly here. One is the way the Rebel passing game has come together the last three weeks, and uh, can that continue? Yes, that, I think that's uh, been, been a key to some of the uh, growth that we've had. Uh, not only, and and, and the, the accuracy in passing is reflective of growth during the year by the quarterback and confidence by that offensive line. I think those are some things that we've been growing on. And a big playmaker, Nowell's coming up. Uh, if it's a tough situation, he will uh, – uh, certainly come through. And then on defense, man, we've not given up as many big plays as we did those first three games. Uh, it's a fight with Bobo and the, and the men surrounding him inside that D-line. And, uh, man, defensive backs, they were popping folks the last yep. couple of games. And early on we'll see a key matchup tonight. Big East Rankin offensive line against the Rebel defensive front. If the Rebels can uh, win those matchups, uh, could be a good night here. And here's the Morris Pharmacy kickoff. We're underway Nowell's kick hits at the 12. Picked up, run up, up the left seam, past the 25, up to the 28. Braden Welch puts the tackle on Slate Henry, who picked it up off the bounce. So a 28-yard line, first and 10 for East Rank, and they're in a kind of a throwback New England Patriots look. White helmets, <laughs> uh, red jerseys with uh, the shoulder stripes like Lee has, and white pants, white numbers. Lee can... Navy helmets, white jerseys, Navy numerals, white pants, moving left to right from the visitor side where we are. And they'll open up the Patriots will with four wide outs. Bring slot man in motion. 
Hand it off to him, looking around the left side. Taylor Woods can't find much. Stop for no gain on the play. Saw Matthew Nowell and yeah. Camden Marble get out of the pile, making the initial stop for L.A. for no gain. Yep, yep. Kept the inside leverage, ran him to the sideline, and if the first wave wouldn't have got him, there was about three waiting to get him. Teamwork makes the dream work, as they <laughs> That's say. That's what I've heard. Second and ten. This time they put an H back or a fullback in, and they'll hand it straight oh, ahead. Good gain, big back, tumbles ahead to the 35 before getting tipped over there, and that's Liam Wilkerson, a senior who's also a defensive lineman, and he looks like a load to try to tackle. Big gain of about seven on the play. It's third and three. Rebels have a four-man line. Quarterback is Luke Wesson, freshman. He takes the snap, hands it off to the big back again, trying to get outside, breaks oh, a tackle. He's on the loose at the 40, up mm. near midfield before Matthew Nowell took his legs out from under him with help from Grayson McDonald. But a nice gain there from Wilkerson to give East Rankin a first down at midfield. He uh, he did get – look, the interior shut that – he cut out. He, 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 he wedged over to the, to the left outside of tackle. Good run. They're going to lean on him. They're going to lean on him again, run straight ahead, find a couple, two, maybe three. I think they'll give him three to the Rebel 47. First quarter of tonight's game presented by the Leak County Co-op. Second and seven for the red-clad Patriots. 10-20, ticking first quarter clock. We just kicked off here from Pelahatchee again. Wilkerson. Plow straight ahead, gets to the 43-yard line before Hagen Bobo and Camden Marble go low and get him down. They'll say they'll say he's at the 44. So it'll be third down and about four. Yeah. Possession play for the Patriots. We've got Owen Hitt coming off with a little limp. From the shotgun, they'll run play action. Wesson sends it out to the right side. Jack Harkins with a Solid great tackle. open field tackle on Nicholas Wesson. Stops him at the 43 and creates a fourth and three. Yeah, read, read that well and, and came up. He closed that last 10 yards pretty quick. And the punt team will come out. Coach Jonathan Worrell not willing to take an early risk. He'll try to play field position here in the first quarter. Charlie Brantley will get back about the 15-yard line. They run a fake. They snap it to a big man up front. The Rebels stack him up short of the line to gain for the first down. Grayson McDonald, Kobe Kemp, and 52. That's Garrett Joyner. Those three stop the play cold at the 42, and the Rebels take over with good field position. Yeah, I don't know what coach it was, but there was some hollering going on. Uh, looks like they saw it and read it. Leak takes over at the 42 after the turnover on down, stopping the fake punt. Two wide receivers to each side. Charlie Brantley at the right hip of George Wilcox from the shotgun. He'll look to throw it quickly. High pass, quick hitch, left side complete at the 46. That's good for four yards on first down. Good catch. I was throwing just a tad high. Aiden Carlisle, the cornerback, made the tackle on Nowell. Again, they'll split receivers two to each side. Work from the left hash. Wilcox sets his feet to the right, throws a little too high for Mathen Weaver, heading toward the sideline on the opposite side along the 50. Incomplete will set up third and six. Oh, boy, if he'd have caught that ball. Some room to run. Yes, had some run. Jack Harkins checks into the game for Leak. Put Ben Jackson, Mathen Weaver, and Harkins to the right. Matthew Nowell on the short side of the field to the left. Snap back to Wilcox. He'll roll out, throw complete for the oh. first down. Juggled for a moment by Ben Jackson, and that allowed the pursuit to catch up to him, but pass complete to the East Rankin 44, and that's good for a Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first down. Yeah, he, he caught it and ran and then forgot the ball, went back and got it. Gain of, what, 13 or so? Yes. From the 44, handoff, Brantley trying to get outside but doesn't get much. Good 
job closing the gap there by Brandon Loper playing at linebacker. Stopped him at the 42-yard line. Picked up a couple second and eight. Leak offense looks into offensive coordinator Corey Burns on the near sideline. And Coach Pickens also giving some direction as well. We've got a stoppage of play. The officials are talking to Coach Worrell on the other side. Stopping the band, I believe. So now the head official coming this way. While they do that, I'll tell you real quick, play kicks picks every week. That's the pick em contest. We'll congratulate the winner. I get the back up. James Ferguson of Duck Hill won last week. Mm -hmm. Play every week at kicks96news.com. Second and eight. Harkins in motion left to right from the pistol. Pressure coming. Wilcox steps away. Now he's going to take off to the 35, 30, 25. Still on his, his feet. feet. Going inside the 15. They'll say he stepped out right at the 20-yard line. Going to get it was George Wilcox. Goes from the, the 42 to the 20, gain of 22, yeah. and a Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first down. Yeah, I thought the guy was going to get him from behind, but a little burst of speed there, and, uh, man, just a couple of inches. He'd had a first Hand off Charlie Brantley on first down. He lets the block set up. Going yeah. outside to the numbers, right side to the 15, the 10, and then thrown down at a the nine-yard line, a pickup of 11, and that's a Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first and goal. They are operating inside the David Barham Insurance Red Zone for the first time tonight, first and goal at the nine. Jackson and Weaver set to the right, short side of the field, now all out to the left. H-back is Major Chandler. Handoff, Weaver. Trying to stretch left side, 10 to the five, breaks loose, and he gets in at the pylon, but there is a flag on the play, Scott. A little like uh, Hayden Jennings. D d it might not be Jennings. Jenkins. Yeah. Jenkins. Uh, had a good block. I don't know if he stayed on him a little too long or not. And it is hold against the Rebels. I'm not saying that was him, but. Sometimes the simplest answer is the right answer. <laughs> it's always going to be the left <laughs> tackle. Occam's Run to the left as the left tackle holder. <laughs> uh, put it back 10 yards back to the 19s. First and goal from there. You know, the quarterback can throw five incompletions, but one little holding play by yeah. a lineman. So and we, we got to walk backwards. There you go. Two receivers to each side now. Weaver, the running back. Setting the throw, a little soft toss oh, to the 15. Good. Great move in the open field. Jack Harkins gets a block, 5-10, and he is in the end zone, standing up that six for the Rebels. How about Jack Harkins and the block from Matthew Nowell? Yes, I was going to say that. He made, they made up for that holding call. Let me tell you something, that was a good play. That was a good-looking play. Weaver Tax and Accounting presents Rebel touchdowns, and they score one on this opening drive going 58 yards Four, six. Here comes Matthew Nowell, who wears number six through the key block that opened the path to the end zone for Harkins from the 19. Snap, hold, kick is high, and it's good. 6.17 to go first quarter. Leak strikes first. They're up 7 nothing. back in 60 with a... Uh, with, as Leak Academy football. If spending days looking for a top dollar for your timber has left you feeling like you're barking up the wrong tree, then I would listen closely. Welch Forest Products in Union does it better than anyone and with the least possible damage to your property. Whether it's management, forestry care, pine plantation, thinning, or site prep, the last number you'll dial is 601-774-8200. They buy land with or without timber too. Call Bo Welch now at Welch Forest Products today. 601-774 I sure do like my new hunting rifle. I bought it over at Ozark Ag. When I went in, they had such a great selection, it took me a while to make up my mind. I have it sighted in now, and I'm ready for the big bucks. Tomorrow, I'm going back over to Ozark Ag and stock up on ammo. While I'm there, I just might check out those deer stands. Hey, honey, I know you're listening. Make sure you shop for me at Ozark Ag. 
there on Highway 16 West in Carthage. Boswell Media Sports. Morris Pharmacy kickoff coming after the Rebel touchdown on their opening drive. Matthew Nowell up on it, kicks it from the right hash. Sky kicks it over toward the 25-yard line. will go out of bounds there. Good field position for East Rankin, but let's set you up with our first performance therapy reset of the night. 52-yard drive for the Rebels, and they got a big 22-yard keeper on a scramble from a, a quarterback George Wilcox down to the 20, and then it was 19 yards on the touchdown connection from QB1 to number five, Jack Harkins, and the extra point by Nowell was good. 7-0, 6-17, first quarter. That's a performance therapy reset. East Rankin will send the Rebels back to kick it off again from the 30. Okay. Weather and field conditions. West side body shot bringing you that beautiful night, 74 degrees, a little slight north breeze, making things feel a little bit cooler. Clear skies, homecoming night in Pelahatchee. Here's Nowell's second try at it, and he'll again sky it toward the 25, taking at the 28. Coming around across the 40 at the numbers left side goes Aiden Carlisle, tackled at the 41. Braden Hall got him down. It's a good field position for the Patriots, but 7 nothing our score first quarter. Yeah, Braden Welch was right there, and he had a choice. Either face Braden Welch and that cast he's got on his right arm or or try to shade to the inside, so they hemmed him up pretty good. Freshman quarterback Luke Wesson from the shotgun hands it to Wilkerson. Mm -hmm. Wilkerson hit by McDonald, but he's Wilkerson's able to drive forward for a couple more after the hit to the 44. Picked up three. Man, McD and McDonald's facing one of their largest line. They have a yeah. large offensive line. He played played off number 75 well, but yeah, man, the fullbacks load too. 75, Jack Boyd, I remember him from last year. Goes at about 285 at right tackle. Jet sweep. Coming around, Nicholas Wesson, and the Rebels get pursued on him. Tyler Winstead and Kobe Kemp yep. get him down at the 47. They still need four yards if they're going to move the chains. Mm -hmm. yeah, Joshua Gray did a good, good job. Locking up with number seven over here in the corner and, and enabled him to have to turn back rather than outside. Four-man defensive front. Hand off Wilkerson trying to go right side. The Rebels get in the backfield and wrestle him down. Great play by Tyler Winstead. Tackle for loss back to the 44. Yes, sir. Well, when, <laughs> when you've got a good hand but you, you only got one card to play, uh, they've been, they changed that second drive. They're isolating on that fullback and uh, keying on him. Bradley and Weaver get ready to receive a punt, get inside the 25. Tyler Stevens, no, excuse me, that's Will McGee going to punt it away. Going to hit at the 27, bounce sideways, and then East Rankin will hop on it at the 28-yard line. L.A. takes over with 4.34 to go in the first quarter, leading 7-zip. Tonight's broadcast is powered by Central Electric Power Association. We appreciate their sponsorship of Leak Academy Rebel Athletics. Nowell, Harkins, and Weaver split to the left. That's a dangerous trio, mm -hmm. isn't it? Harkins, I mean, excuse me, Jackson out to the right. Jackson will be the target, but the pass a little bit too tall and through his hands, incomplete. What a quick on the quickest of quick, quick hitch routes. Let me tell you, he throws that ball with authority. He has grown so much in the last four or five games. He has thrown for nearly 900 yards the last three games. Wow. Ten touchdowns and one interception. Sophomore. Two by two receivers. Brantley at his left hip. Wilcox fakes, throws, now escapes pressure, comes out to the left, tosses it at the 35, complete to Nowell, breaks a tackle, then he stumbles crossing the 40. He was trying to put a move on Bryson Lowe, the safety. But that gain is going to be enough to get 12, 13 yards and a Central Mississippi Animal Clinic, first and 10 for Leak. Leak 
So move the chains. Ball right between the 41 and 42. Call it the 41. Four wide receivers in the formation. Wilcox checks the protection. Three-man front for the Patriots. Hand off. But not much room to run for Brantley. I thought something was opening up. A good job by Loper, the linebacker, to stuff that little opening that Brantley thought he had, a gain of just one. Yeah, that number 75 was immovable on that play. Yep. That's big Jack Boyd who's playing in the middle. And he is a load. 3-4 defensive alignment for the Patriots, second and nine. Back to throw, Wilcox fires. Ball oh. tipped, but still caught on the near sideline. Going inside the 40 is Matthew Nowell down to the 36-yard line. The Rebels thought thought things were going, going sideways, but then they uh, end up completing the pass anyway. 32-yard yeah, gain on that. Big gain for Leak. Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first down at the ERA 46. Two by two receivers, handoff. Brantley looking for room to run, and he gets grabbed from behind, spun down hard by Braden Warner. Gain of just a yard on the play, second and nine. Major Chandler comes into the game. Provide an extra blocker out there. Clock under three minutes to play first quarter. We've been moving along at a pretty quick pace in this first quarter. Yeah. From the left hash, second and nine. Brantley handoff. Got red shirts in front of him, but staying on his feet, trying to get to the corner, gets to the numbers, gets forced out of bounds at the 32-yard line, was put on his knees before that, so gets about three. Got about three. Ben Jackson, that's, that was a good no block. He could have blocked and he could have ran for another 20 yards, but he chose not to put his hands up and interfere. Resulted in plus three rather than a negative 10. Brantley comes out. Rebels put Major Chandler in at running back. Set him up to block for Wilcox. Throwing in, throwing complete to Nowell inside the 25. Pushing forward to the numbers to the 14. Carried about three ERA defenders with him. Aiden Carlisle was the one who hopped on his back and rode him down, but now the Rebels are in the David Barm Insurance red zone, first and 10 from the 14, two minutes to play in the first quarter. Good job in this with this passing attack, finding yeah. the open man in the zone. 25, Caden Chipley checks into the game for Chandler. He's at running back. Bring Weaver in motion, jet sweep to him, right side, but red shirts there. They read the play well, stopped it right along the line of scrimmage. Didn't get much at all. In fact, really no gain on the play, yeah. second and 10. 21, Grayson Williams came in for, at linebacker and brought Weaver down. Yeah, they are tough, right? Tackle to tackle. Wilcox looks to the sideline. Plenty of time on the play clock. Under 90 seconds to play in the quarter. He's going to take a shotgun snap. Throw short. Ball caught. Tackled immediately as Weaver and just pushed back at the 11. So a short gain, about three yards on the play. L.A. faces third and seven. Cornerback Carlisle read the play quickly, didn't allow him to turn around and get upfield. They've not put a man. Well, I've got him on there now. Two wide receivers to each side. Wilcox throwing corner out of the end zone. Weaver oh, can't boy. get to it. Just a little beyond his reach. Well, that was a good, good looking pass from our perspective right here. Bryson Lowe was back there in coverage for East Rankin on that corner route. Field goal unit coming on the field. Matthew Nowell about to attempt a 28-yard field goal. Ben Jackson about to bend over the ball to snap it. Seth Martin ready to spot and hold it. 
Rebels, uh, somebody either came offside or left early. Tanner Walsworth moved. We'll see who, who sure. did what when. Maybe it's offsides and they forced us to move. Offsides. Yeah, right. Patriots get offside, and that's going to bring the Rebel offense back out onto the field. Yeah. Field goal unit coming back to the sideline. That's going to set up the Rebels at the six. First and goal, no, uh, fourth and one. Fourth down and one. Shotgun formation, Got hard again. count. And the Rebels draw East Rankin offside with a hard count. Move it down to the three, it'll be first and goal. Central Mississippi Animal Clinic, first down. You know, game six, you Game six, you need to eight. be expecting things hey, like this that. This is eight. Yeah. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it even worse. Doesn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. Season's gone by that quick, it, it too. It is flying, man. It is flying. Rebels from the left hash, first and goal. Extra lineman out there. We'll give it on a sweep to Brantley, who cuts inside on the right side and goes in standing up. Six for the Rebels. Three-yard touchdown run for Charlie Brantley. And the Rebels get their second Weaver Tax and Accounting touchdown of the quarter. You know, we, we attributed the last couple of touchdowns to Blocks. Uh, his his stutter, stutter move to the right and back to the left, he, he made that happen. He was out there isolated on the island, and uh, man, that, that was a good move. Matthew Nowell will line up to kick. Jackson snaps it, Martin holds it. Nowell kicks it, and it's good. 37 seconds to go in the quarter. Leak takes a 14-0 lead. My knee rehab was 100% successful thanks to performance therapy. They sat down with me and created a plan to ensure I would achieve my personal rehabilitation goals, and they encouraged me to get the most out of every session. Performance therapy provided plenty of material for me to continue my rehab in between sessions too. Hopefully I don't have to see them in the future, but if I did, I would definitely choose performance therapy again. For more information, go to performancetherapyms.com. Performance Therapy, Carthage, Philadelphia, and Forest. Moore's Pharmacy in Carthage, Sebastopol, and Walnut Grove appreciate you, their customers. We have a beautiful selection of gifts with free gift wrapping. We are one of the only pharmacies around to offer compounding and women's hormone replacement therapy. Moore's Pharmacy accepts all insurance, including Medicaid. Our two-lane drive through and prescription synchronization will make your visit very convenient. Come see us. We have the shortest wait time in town and a professional staff to assist you. Moore's Pharmacy, Highway 16, Carthage. Boswell Media Sports. Matthew Nowell sends a kick deep, taken at the 12-yard line, coming up the left hash. Now working to the outside is Henry, and the Rebels get him down outside the numbers along the 30-yard line. 70 yards of real estate in front of the Patriots on their third possession, but Leaks had the ball twice, put it in the end zone twice. That time they got a first and goal at the three thanks to an offside penalty. Three-yard run from Charlie Brantley, and Nowell's extra point made it 14-0 in the closing seconds of the first quarter. That's a performance therapy reset for you. Yeah, looking pretty solid tonight. <clears throat> Luke Wesson in the shotgun. Has Loper at running back next to him, and Loper takes the handoff up the middle, bounces off Kobe Kemp, across the 40. Oh, man. Gets through to the 40, 30, running down the sideline, and he's going to take it 70 yards for a touchdown. First carry of the night, 70-yard run to the house for Brandon Loper. Let me tell you, we had, we had four players get hands on him. That was a man run. <laughs> he, he, uh, that, that was impressive. I remember Loper from last year, and he's just a sophomore. Swinging gate formation yep. on the extra point. Wesson will hold, and Toler Logan set up to kick. The kick is up, and it's good. Mm. Well, that's a quick answer. Wow. 
from ERA to make it 14-7 late in the first quarter. We'll have the Morris Pharmacy kickoff coming up in a moment, but I want to take a minute and congratulate Emma Jane Leppard. She's been chosen as an MAIS softball all-star. Wow. Lee Academy, uh, Lee Academy's own Emma Jane Leppard. The all-star game is going to be October 11. That's next Wednesday at Jackson Prep. Starts at 415. So congratulations to MAIS all-star Emma Jane Leppard. Leak Academy softball team finished the season strong. That's an honor. Definitely. Yep, they don't just uh, no, don't give, give those, those out <laughs> like uh, fans at the <laughs> funeral when the, no. air, when the air conditioning's out. <laughs> you know, the younger generation might not know what, <laughs> what, what a funeral home fan what is. What a funeral home fan is. Here's the Moore's Pharmacy kickoff. Low tumbling kick taken at the 25 by Brantley up the left hash. Going to break outside. Ooh, got a hole. Blocked from Harkins. And then across the 35 and taken out of bounds there at the 38. Eight seconds to go in the quarter. But a nice return from Brantley of oh, about uh, 30 yards. I mean, uh, excuse me, about uh, 25 yards. Yeah, they're number eight. Uh, that's a game-saving tackle right there or a touchdown-saving tackle. LA back at the line of scrimmage from the 38, leading 14 to 7. Brantley sweeping right side, handoff gets a block, lowers his head as he goes across the 40 to the 41 and picks up three on what's going to be the final play of tonight's first quarter. Leak 14, East Rankin 7 will return in 60 seconds with the start of the second quarter as Leak Academy football continues. TNK Farms Woodmiser is Mississippi's Woodmiser sawmill equipment dealership. TNK Farms Woodmiser sells the complete Woodmiser equipment line from small personal sawmills to the industrial equipment lineup. TNK Farms stocks parts and has experienced factory trained service technicians with both in shop and mobile service available. See TNK Farms Woodmiser to start your sawmill business today. Credit cards are accepted for all services. Like them on Facebook, TNK Farms Woodmiser, just off Highway 25 at 1128 Liberty Road, Louisville, 662-803-4332. Did you know most people overpay by up to 50% for individual health insurance? David Barham Insurance will save you that. Plus, David has the best rates on the market for Medicare supplements. The solution is not on the internet or far away. It's right here in Carthage. David Barra, a local insurance agent you can trust. Make sure you have the best coverage and price. Call David Barra, 601-941-1280, on the north side of the square in Carthage. Boswell, Pass Media completed Sports. on the first play of the quarter, over the middle to Ben Jackson, and it goes 62 yards. And just like that, the Rebels answer and go up 20-7. to seven. A little play action there, Scott, and uh, <laughs> you can't be more open between the hashes than Ben Jackson was. Well, last home game, I, I, I started shouting in the middle of a play, so I, I held my tongue, <laughs> but I was pointing the whole time. You were. <laughs> I saw him when, he, when, he, when that linebacker went up and he went by. Good call across the middle. 62 yards. Weaver, Taxon County presents Rebel touchdowns. Third one tonight. Here's now on to kick the extra point. That's a low kick, but it makes it between the pipes, and it's 21-7. to seven. Well, we'll keep it here. We barely got back <laughs> on the air when that uh, yes. play ran. But 62 yards, uh, second touchdown throw for Wilcox tonight. And I'm not even uh, – I don't even have the last score fully written in my uh, <laughs> score sheet. That's how – Those are quick fast this is if going we, if, if every game was like this you'd have to hire somebody else and that's right sponsor another chair up here <laughs> i could use four or five other chairs yes. i could use a spotter <laughs> chair a stat guy chair a, well maybe we'll put that on the prayer <laughs> list somebody to give me a hot dog when i'm hungry yes sir <laughs> i'll love it come on boris pharmacy kickoff coming up 21 7 rebels in front Two straight plays from scrimmage have resulted in touchdowns. Of length. Yes. yes. 70 yards on the run by Loper for ERA, and then for Leak, 62 yards, Wilcox to Jackson. 
Morris Pharmacy kickoff from now on. High end over end kick taken at the 17. Henry oh, up the left. Hash gets into some traffic and hit hard. There's some words being spoken as the teams head to their sidelines. He's taken down at the 30, about the 32 yard line. Yeah, that's where the Patriots will start. Leak up 14 points early second quarter. Yeah, that was a good lick. I didn't see who made it, but when when the when yeah. the runner lands feet first, going forward, look, he, he he took quite a lick. Patriots in red come off the far sideline. They'll come straight to the line of scrimmage. And there's that man again, Brandon Loper, Ooh. 24, at running back. He's had one carry for 70 yards. One yeah. wide receiver left, two right. They'll fake it to Loper and then hit. That's a lateral. They throw. Lateral. The ball's going back, still alive and recovered by East Rankin back around the 21 yard line. But you're right, that throw was not a forward pass. You got a flag on the field. There is a flag back along the line of scrimmage. It was thrown about the time that uh, the quarterback, Wesson, got hit. They're going to say holding against East Rankin, and Rebels will, of course, decline that. Take the ball or uh, if East Rankin take the ball at the 20. Holding penalty declined. Loss of 12 on the play on the lateral out to the right side. So getting behind and down in distance is East Rankin. The train is coming. You'll hear it about <laughs> three times tonight, maybe four. Here's the first. Had it during the pregame, and it's coming here early second quarter. 11-19 to go before halftime. Second down and 22. In motion to the left, they throw a little screen back to the middle, complete oh, to Aiden Carlisle. He's got room to run. 30, 40, 50. At the 30, still on his feet. 20, he gets pushed from behind down around the at the nine-yard line. But there is a flag at the 50. Wow. So we'll see what the flag is. That play covered 71 yards. Look, one thing I noticed, when he let loose, offside corner, if you if, if you play cor- what to call on this, I'll tell you after he lets us know what it is. It must be on them. No. They say hold on leak. Coach Brian Pickens out near the hash wants and deserves some kind of explanation. Yes. So they'll say that there was a hold that far down the field on a little screen pass that wasn't, uh, that was just dumped off right around the line of scrimmage. Wow. 71 yards on the play. Coach Pickens getting his explanation now as he walks with the referee along the hash marks to the 25. Look, if it wouldn't have been a 100% effort, that would have been a touchdown. Joshua Gray was going to make the tackle. I don't know who got him from behind. Sophomore cornerback, 5'9", 140. Wesson takes the snap, handoff straight ahead, Loper turns, Gracious. spins, and he's going in the end zone standing up like nobody's even bothering him. And that's – they sure made that look easy in, Mercy. Two, in three plays on that drive, and it's 21-13 with a point after coming. We've got ourselves a shootout. Nine yards on the touchdown run, second of the night for Loper. Logan, right-footed kicker. Puts it up and puts it through. 10.56 to go, 21-14, leak ahead, back in 60. Carthage Veterinary Clinic, how may we help you? Hey, I have a new puppy and I need to bring her in for vaccination. Oh, what's her name? Ellie. We're so glad you called for an appointment and look forward to meeting you and Ellie. This is Dr. Brooke Bobo, and we at Carthage Veterinary Clinic are glad to schedule you an appointment for you and your pet. That way we can give you the time that you deserve. Carthage Veterinary Clinic, Highway 16 West in Carthage. Find all our contact info on Facebook or Google. Before you begin those do-it-yourself projects outside your home or business, be sure you know where your underground utilities are located. Always call before you dig. One easy phone call to 811 can protect you from injury and expense. Plus, it's the law in Mississippi. Make the call and avoid serious or fatal injury. 
For more electrical safety tips, contact Central Electric Power Association. Serving you since 1937. An equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. Logan with the Moore's Pharmacy kickoff. Kicks it on the ground. Picked up at the 25. Grayson McDonald along the numbers left side. Comes back toward the middle of the field and then stood up as he gets to the 34-yard line. Leak starts there, trailing, or excuse me, leading 21-14. But East Rankin has hit two big plays on their last two drives, and they are very much in this ball game. Uh, both teams playing with great, great passion, but that, that's a lot of scoring in the last two minutes. Very quick MAIS scoreboard update. Jackson Prep leading PCS 21-0 first quarter. JA leading Starkville 14-0 first quarter. Simpson over Lamar 7-0 first quarter. And MRA and Hartfield after one tied 7-7 throw up the right side. Matthew Weaver's behind. His man got it at the 35, thrown down at the 26-yard line by Carlisle. What a throw and catch <laughs> from Wilcox. I mean, just threw it up about above our eye level. <laughs> yes, it had plenty of heights on it. 22, if it had threw it two yards longer, it would have been a touchdown. <laughs> wow. So they go from the 34, 16, plus 25, 41 yards. 41. From the shotgun, handoff, Caden Chipley. Left side steps through, gets a crease, but can't turn up field. It's kept going east and west. And the safety, Bryson Lowe, came up and hit him on the thigh, drove him down after a gain of two. Or one, yeah, really just one, yeah. second and nine. That play could have gone for more, I think. From the left hash, Chipley at running back. Major Chandler, H-back set to the left. One wide receiver left, two right. Wilcox stops, turns, throws, caught by Ben Jackson at the 15, and Carlisle grabs him around the waist, Gracious. takes him back beyond the 25, and then throws him down. But Ben Jackson's a lot bigger than Carlisle. He let him. <laughs> he relaxed. That's the only reason that I happened. I think so. Second quarter has been exciting. <laughs> a lot of fireworks here that yep. presented to you by Welch Forest Products. 9.37 on a ticking second quarter clock. Leak up 21-14, but they're back in the David Barham Insurance red zone at the 15. Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first down. Handoff sweep around the left side. Matthew Weaver trying to get to the corner. Flag uh -huh. is down as he's taken around the shoulder pads, pulled out of bounds at the 10, but Leak's going to move back. Should be a holding penalty. Needless to say, Coach Jonathan Worrell is going to accept that penalty. Move Leak back to the 25, first and 20. Hope you're enjoying tonight's Edinburgh Drugs video stream from Pilahatchee. First and 20. Chest high snap, throw left side taken by Nowell, who nearly slips, gets to the 20. The pursuit catches up with him between the numbers and the sideline after a pickup of five yards. Be second and 15. That works uh, like a good running play in this Rebel offense. That just quick turn, catch. Yes, sir. Harkins out in front of him to block. Yeah. Nowell split out to the left. Three men split out to the right. Pistol set to throw. Looking to the right side. Throwing it toward the end zone. Got Weaver back there. He dies. He, he that. makes the catch. That's he six for the that. Rebels in the back of the end zone. Rebel touchdowns presented by Weaver Tax and Accounting. And that is catch 22, Mathen Weaver <laughs> with the highlight play. Let me tell you something. He laid out for that. It is 27-14. He dove with about three yards left out of the back of the end zone and nothing but his toes <laughs> touched the end zone. Yeah. That was beautiful. Right toward the padding of the goalpost. Yes. The snap, the hold, the kick for the extra point. Nearly blocked, but it's good with eight and a half minutes to go. Rebels 28 and East Rankin 14. You can't get much for five bucks these days. 
Unless you go to Wendy's for a $5 Biggie Bag. Get your choice of double stack, junior bacon cheeseburger, or crispy chicken sandwich. Plus four-piece nugs, junior fry, and a small soft drink. All for just five bucks. You got that bag. You got that Biggie Bag. You got that bag. That was smooth, wasn't it? That's how you're going to feel when you get that Biggie Bag at Wendy's. You got that bag. You got that bag. U.S. price and participation may vary. Edinburgh Drugs, right in the heart of Edinburgh. They make convenience a priority for their customers with easy drive through pickup and free home or business delivery. You can also visit edinburghdrugs.com to shop for gifts and order your refills while you're there. Patient education is very important to owner and pharmacist Cody Coffin. She's happy to explain your medication and how to take them. Health Mart. Taking the time to listen and care. Edinburgh Drugs, your independently owned Health Mart Pharmacy. Highway 16, Edinburgh. Boswell Media Sports. Deep kickoff taken inside the 10. Hit at the 35, still dragging tacklers forward is Slate Henry. Cade McGraw finally into the play with help from Camden Marble. Yep. 8 19 to go. The Rebels got another <laughs> impressive touchdown play. Third TD throw of the night for QB1, George Wilcox. That time he found Weaver from 20 yards in the back of the end zone. Great diving catch. The Rebels got it going on. 28 points scored so far, and we're not even in the middle of the second quarter. And that's a performance therapy reset. 28 14. Patriots going right to left. White helmets, red jerseys, white pants. H-back set to the left. Handoff Loper. Will the Rebels get him down? He gets to the second level. Gets about 13 or get, well, gets about 11 on first yeah. down to the 49. And so the Rebels have still yet to fully engage Mr. Loper. Look, he's a handful. That's a good looking. Good looking run the last couple plays. First and 10, Wesson from the shotgun with Loper at his right side. Three wide receivers in the formation. Wesson wants to throw, will throw it deep, right side. Good position, nearly intercepted by Charlie Brantley at the 32. He had great position on yes. Nicholas Wesson. Could have had the INT. Yeah, just ran out of room, <clears throat> but did have the, had the horizontal leverage on him and kept his, kept his position and, what a great play. Second and 10. Joyner, Donovan, Bobo, McDonald, the four down lineman for Leak. Second and 10, Loper on the handoff. Gets to the outside, 45, mm. 40, 35, and gets tripped up around the ankles there by Matthew Nowell, and that's another big run of 21 yards, and that's another first down. Look, that's a touchdown saving tackle. It's like both teams have decided not to try inside the tackles and, and attack the outside. Loper has to come off the field. He's already passed 100 yards, carried the ball, what, five, six times. Yes. First and 10, hand off the big back. Wilkerson runs into a log jam at the 28-yard line. Mm -hmm. Gain of about two. Marble and Bobo and McDonald teamed up to stop big Wilkerson. Second and we'll call it long seven. A long Short eight. seven. We'll call it second and eight. Yeah, ball's right at the 28 near hash. Wilkerson, no, keeper Ooh, this keeper. time. Wesson gets tripped up by Bobo as he and Donovan as he goes through the whole left side on a read option play. He falls forward to the 22. They give him the 21-yard line and set up third and one. Pickup of seven. A long seven. Now we got a short one. Loper back in the game at running back. Clock ticking, 646. Second quarter clock. Rebels leading 28-14, but Patriots are finding their offense clicking in the second quarter. Handoff. Loper pushes off one defender, breaks off another oh. tackle, gets free again to the 10, to the 5, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, no flags. And let me tell you something, 
Rebels going to have to find a way to stop Brandon Loper. Yes, yes. We thought 35 to begin with was test in the middle. Uh, but uh, he has such a low center of gravity, and those legs never stop moving. And he he runs with his uh, – not only with a with a good low center of gravity, but he uses that free hand to, to move. He pushed a defender into the line of another guy going to make the tackle, which actually freed him. Logan's extra point is plenty high, and it's good. 6.28 to go. It's 28.21 back in 60. Dr. Ryan Anderson and his crew at Central Mississippi Animal Clinic love getting to know you and your pets. In addition to your pet's health care, they offer boarding that will be your fur baby's home away from home. Become a member of the Central Mississippi Animal Clinic family today. Download the Central Mississippi Animal Clinic app or go to centralmississippianimalclinic.com. Central Mississippi Animal Clinic, Highway 35, Carthage. Total Pain Care's mission has always been to reduce suffering, increase function, and provide a better quality of life for every patient. Dr. Eric Pearson and Dr. C.C. Martin are committed to treating patients with the highest standard of care. Total Pain Care has full-time clinics in Meridian and Philadelphia, providing a convenient option for Neshoba County and surrounding areas. Total Pain Care, located in the Medical Arts Clinic at Neshoba General Hospital, here to help you get back to living your best life. Boswell Media Sports. Moore's Pharmacy kickoff on the ground. Scooped up at the 23 by Grayson McDonald. He's to the 35. 40 pushes off a defender. Dragging tacklers across the 45 to the 47. And getting some love from the Leak Academy fans down below us in the bleachers. Sets up the Rebels in fine field position at the 47. That was another great touchdown drive for... Mm -hmm. The Patriots, they get 20 yards on the score, 21 yards on the score from Loper, his third run of the night into the end zone. And he shed about four or five different Rebel defenders on his way. That's a performance therapy reset, 28-21. Three men split to the left, one to the right. Wilcox takes the snap, throws at the 50-yard line to Weaver, who's put down after he turns around, gets one extra yard, gains about four on the play, second and six. He'll come to the line quickly, move with a little tempo, same formation. Charlie Brantley, the running back, fakes to Brantley, throws in a slant to Ben Jackson, complete at the 40, and he's able to keep his momentum going forward to the 35 before Carlisle's hit on the hip knocked him down, but that's a Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first down and a gain of 14. Pistol set, Wilcox quick snap, drops back, sets his feet, gonna put it up deep for Nowell inside the five, he's got it! Touchdown, six for the Rebels, but holding at the line of, penalty flag at the line of scrimmage, so this may come back. Smattering of applause yep. from the home stands, mm. holding against the Rebels. Coach Pickens standing with his hands on his hips, looking out toward the offensive line. Who says uh, you can't say much with body language? <laughs> he said, read, he said a, a big paragraph right there. Nah, I read his mind, and we'll just leave that between him and the, <laughs> whoever he was <laughs> talking to. Uh, but you hate to see points come off the board. First and 20 from the 45-yard line. Back to throw again. Wilcox now looking right side. Going to dump it into Jackson. Complete at the 35. Back on the original line of scrimmage. The Rebels get 10. Loper came in to knock Jackson down. 5-18 and the clock ticking toward halftime. It's homecoming here. We're going to have a long Wendy's halftime. We're going to talk to the cheerleader captains about uh, some of the trophies they brought home. We're going to talk to Georgia Hardy and Harper Richardson. Second and ten. Again to throw. Wilcox looking deep. Nice touch. Has Weaver got it at the ten. Fighting forward across the five. Put down at the three. Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first down. Gain of 32 on the play. 
And the Rebels are in the David Barm Insurance Red Zone first and goal. The Rebel passing game is electric. Is electric, elite, and doing well. And to throw on first to goal from the three. They toss ah. it out to Brantley on a little quick out pattern from the uh, slot man, but it was just outside his reach and complete. Didn't quite put enough touch on it. You know, Second and goal. During the break, you know, they're, they're, they're trusted in their running game. We have several weapons uh, to use tonight, which will help us as this game goes on. Send Weaver out to the wide side of the field to the left, but Jackson and Chandler on the left side of the line, give it to Brantley, turning inside, fighting to the painted line, and that's six for the Rebels. Touchdown, Charlie Brantley, his second run into the end zone tonight. Rebel touchdowns presented by Weaver Tax and Accounting. Yeah, good block into that. He cut that back against the grain, and they over-pursued just a little bit. Matthew Nowell, <clears throat> excuse me, Nowell on to kick the extra point. Snap, but hold is good, and the kick is good with 4.36 to go. Leak, 35, East Rankin, 21, back in 60. What is the value of an independent insurance agent? We don't work for any one insurance company. Instead, we work for our clients. We sell insurance from multiple companies, and that means at South Group Cox Agency, you always have an expert on your side who can find you the best policy and rates for you and your family. Now is the time to come by and let us at South Group Cox give you a free quote. Open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. South Group Cox Agency, 207 West Main Street in Carthage. It was my turn. I oversaw the ordering of our family reunion custom t-shirts. I had no idea what I wanted, but the girls at In Sports were so helpful. They showed me several ideas and colors that made my decision much easier, and the prices were very reasonable. Thank you to In Sports for filling my order quickly. You'll always be my go-to for personalized t-shirts. Check out their Facebook page to see more cool things they personalize. In Sports, Beacon Street, Philadelphia. Boswell Media Sports. Here's the Morris Pharmacy kickoff. Matthew Nowell kicking from the right hash. Sends it deep toward the 15-yard line taken by Henry. Henry left hash, met near the oh. 30, and then John Donovan hit him, held him up, and then big shoulder from Camden Marble <laughs> to put him down at the 30. And that's the way they're going to have to deal with this running back. You know, you, you want to make the perfect stand-up, drive them home, a tackle when you're when you're fighting a running back with such low uh, center of gravity. Look, first one there just needs to grab him, hang on, let the rest of them finish. Yep, it. till help arrives. Performance therapy reset. Big pass to Weaver. Got the Rebels in business at the three, and two plays later, Charlie Bantley crashed in. PAT from now made it 35 nothing. Four, excuse me, 35-21. 4:27 to go. In the second quarter, and that's a performance therapy reset. Wilkerson oh goodness. handed off on a reverse. Taylor Woods coming around the side, 35, gets a seam, 40, gets hit yeah, and driven into the near sideline. Cam Marble and Jack Harkins get him down at the 50. That's a gain of 20, but a flag is down at the 35. And it's going to be against the Patriots. Coach Pickens points. Back toward the west says, uh, let's put, make them go that way. Rebels have had trouble uh, in this second quarter with stopping them, but anytime East Rankin wants to stop themselves, you'll take it. We'll take what we get. Um, good play by our, our corner over here on this side to uh, turn the play back, but the hit, running back never checked up. Good pursuit would, would have stopped it. I'm thankful for the flag. They lose. Five yards on the holding penalty, four yards, or blah, 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 blah. yeah, they lose four yards. Second and first and 14, excuse me. Scoreboard does not show down in distance, so we have to look at the sticks. <laughs> first and 14, Wilkerson handoff, runs into a crowd. Rebels stop him, Hagen Bobo. And 52, no, excuse me, John Donovan and Garrett Joyner, excuse me, they were in the middle of that pile. That was 52 instead of 58. Yeah. 
pickup of two, second and 12. Patriots look to the far sideline. Clock ticking under 345 to play before half. Loper back in the game at running back. He'll swing out to the right. They'll throw it behind the line of scrimmage. And looked sure like a lateral, but it was blown incomplete. Yeah. That's not a smooth looking play for East Rankin. No, I know what they were trying to get uh, 24 out in the open uh, where he's he's very dangerous, but he reached back with his right hand behind him to get the ball that was thrown behind him and they blew it incomplete. It must have been. Yeah, they. I mean, and that was a quick <laughs> whistle too. It sure was. Third and 12, four wide receivers in the formation. Rebels will bring Marble on a blitz. They pick him up. Wesson rolling out right side, throws, has a man open, caught at the 35, falling down, but picking up the first down is Nicholas Wesson, the senior. So they get 22 yards and a first down. He come out of the Excuse pocket. me, they get 17 and yeah, a first down. Come out of the pocket, and Al went up to pursue him and then, then, then checked back because he had a receiver behind him and just didn't get back there quick enough. East Rankin. Down 14, hands it off to Loper. He gets into, gets close to there Rebel territory, go. then gets stood up. Good gang tackle at the 49, yard short of the midfield stripe. Joyner, McDonald, Harkins getting in there. Gain of four, second and six. Second quarter presented by Welch Forest Products. There have been... Points put up on the scoreboard in the second quarter. Second and six for the Patriots. Loper straight ahead has the first down. Steps past two defenders to the 30. 25 along the sideline, still on his feet. Steps out of bounds, though, at the 16-yard line. He was headed to the end zone. Rebels look like they are almost allergic to tackling him. <laughs> they're getting, I don't they're know getting their hands on him. I can't find a kind way to put it. They're no. just doing a terrible job of tackling number 24. It's, uh, yeah, they're going high. <laughs> and he is so thick. Look, you have got to attack below the belt. Carthage Veterinary Clinic timeout taken with 2.27 to go before halftime. And we'll keep things here and update the scoreboard for you. Not everybody's scoring points at the rate we are, but uh, Louisville uh, leading uh, their old rival, Kosciuszko, 24-0 at the half. Pontotoc up 24-0 on New Hope. Uh, looking at some of the local scores, Philadelphia with a 19-14 lead against Sebastopol late second quarter. Union and Forest tied 14-14 second quarter. Morton up on Mendenhall, 2013, second quarter. Newton County, 12-7 lead over Choctaw Central in the second quarter. Tupelo leading Madison Central, 7-3, second quarter. Park Lane leading Oak Forest, 19-zip in the second quarter. French Camp and Ethel, big 1A rivalry, scoreless in the first quarter. That's a quick look around. We are 35-21 here. We put up more points than all of them. Yes. Coming out of the Carthage Vet Clinic timeout. Handoff Loper, but he stumbles. Loses a yard at the 16. <laughs> John Donovan was in there to plug the hole second at Let's say no gains, second and ten. You know, and they're not scared to run straight up the middle. Um, with that linebacker said about five yards off, and uh, look, they're they're doing some pretty good peel blocks out there. Second and ten, keeper on an option read, room to run for the quarterback Wesson. He's inside the five, put down at the three. He's got the first down. It'll be first and goal at about the two-yard line. Right now, that Rebel interior defense is, is just struggling. Yeah. They're, uh, they're just doubling down on everybody, and uh, <laughs> running back after five yards can fend for himself. 
90 seconds to play in the quarter. East Rankin taking their time for good reason. In fact, they're probably going to use a timeout right here. No, they're going to snap it with one on the play clock. Keeper for Wesson trying to push his way up the middle, and he gets into the end zone, just would not go down, no. stayed behind his center, and found his way into the end zone. Touchdown for East Rankin. Swing and gate out here for the extra point. I think there's going to be some interesting uh, halftime conversation in this extended halftime of the, the Rebel yes. uh, gathering at halftime. The extra point is good from Logan, and we're at 35-28. And we'll take the break. We'll be back as Leak Academy football continues. What is the value of an independent insurance agent? We don't work for any one insurance company. Instead, we work for our clients. We sell insurance from multiple companies, and that means at South Group Cox Agency, you always have an expert on your side who can find you the best policy and rates for you and your family. Now is the time to come by and let us at South Group Cox give you a free quote. Open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. South Group Cox Agency. 207 West Main Street in Carthage. It was my turn. I oversaw the ordering of our family reunion custom t-shirts. I had no idea what I wanted, but the girls at In Sports were so helpful. They showed me several ideas and colors that made my decision much easier, and the prices were very reasonable. Thank you to In Sports for filling my order quickly. You'll always be my go-to for personalized t-shirts. Check out their Facebook page to see more cool things they personalize. In Sports, Beacon Street, Philadelphia. Boswell Media Sports. Moore's Pharmacy kickoff. Looks like it uh, went out of bounds. It was or off, off, off sides. sides almost. Uh, the pooch kick almost looked like a uh, almost like an onside kick. I don't know if it was an onside or not. But thirty-five twenty-eight, and we're not at halftime yet. <laughs> What's the over/under on this game? Yeah, in, in Vegas, I wonder. <laughs> I don't know if there's any Vegas action. I think you've got to – you probably got to go out to – got to go out to Twin Cities or somewhere and find uh, find yeah, that kind of action. Probably so. Logan will attempt it again from the 35. And sky kick taken at the 47, 48-yard line. Tyler – what was that, Tyler Winstead? It was who yep. caught it. It's a kick that's about 12, 14 feet up off the ground at, at most. And then – Kicked around that first line, taken yep. at the 47. So, Leak will have good field position. They've got yeah. a couple of timeouts, 114 to play before halftime. Why not get another touchdown? Why not? There seems to be the uh, the trend uh, so far. An another increment of seven wouldn't hurt anybody up here in the press box. 35-28. Team's trading blows right now. Wilcox with time to throw on first down. Fires it complete to Jackson at the 40. He turns, breaks loose from one defender, gets hit by two, three, four guys, and drags them ahead to the 34 for a pickup of 19 and a Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first down. Three wide outs right, one to the left. Major Chandler running back. Minute to play as Wilcox takes the snap, throws it deep left oh, that's side, pretty. and there's a lot of hand contact at the goal line. Going to be interference. Will McGee. Decided to, he wasn't going to let Matthew no. Nowell turn and get that pass and completes or, or commits the penalty. No, if I'm a defensive coach over uh, for the Patriots, I, I, that, I, I, that was a good flag because yep. uh, the only alternative was a touchdown. That ball went, what, 45, 50 yards in there? Just yeah, about. about 40, 45 yards for sure. They'll walk it forward, 15 yards. We'll pick up a Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first down and put the Rebels in the David Barm Insurance red zone. We've got 53 seconds to play in the half. The Rebels will set up first and 10, two by two receivers. Wilcox, as you expect, going to throw it. Left side off the hands of Jackson, incomplete at the 13. So that little, uh, I don't know if you call that a dig route or 
And a, coming back to the inside, the it's curl. been successful, yeah. In the 80s, would call it a curl. I'm That's sure right. they've upgraded the terminology little, by now. They, yeah, and, and they, he kind of comes at it at an angle. Yeah. But uh, curls back toward the quarterback. Not it's quite a successful, slant. but they couldn't quite get it there. Second and 10 with 47 seconds to play. Three men to the left, one to the right. Three-man front. They'll rush a linebacker, throw into the open space, complete to Jackson inside the 10, and he gets hurled out of bounds around the five. Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first and goal. 40 seconds to go. It's Coach Pickens not going to call the timeout there. Thought he was moving to do that, but and they're looking back in. Clock has stopped with the play going out of bounds. The Rebels knocking on the door. First and goal at the five. Two receivers to each side. Now the timeout's going to be called. The Carthage Vet Clinic timeout called by the Patriots with 40 seconds to go. You know, it'd be nice if we scored as time ran out because you don't want to give their offense yeah. so not one second. But I'm told that uh, East Rankin Academy puts on a uh, Ringling Brothers, Barnum <laughs> and Bailey circus kind of halftime show, and I, I thought of that earlier, and I looked in the end zone. They've got I saw somebody in a zebra outfit over there. <laughs> and they got, uh, I see some uh, Mexican dancers and a mariachi band. I see uh, a lion. Uh, yeah, there's the zebra, an alligator. I see. I'm surprised it didn't cost people 30 <laughs> bucks to get in for this. This is an extravaganza. The only <laughs> yes. thing I can think of, if they if they would send a food plate up to the to this press box, would be the only thing I don't <laughs> see yet. think we need. That would be wonderful. It will be a cavalcade of whimsy. Yes. <laughs> Coming out of the timeout. First to goal at the five. From the right hash. Wilcox looking to the left to throw toward the corner. Breaking, reaching up, grabbing it, but not be able to reel it in. Is Matthew Nowell in the left corner of the end zone incomplete? Good coverage back there from Nicholas Wesson. Yep. No, excuse me, that was seven, uh, Bryson Lowe. I wasn't going to let him behind him. Rebels will bring in Charlie Brantley and bring Jack Harkins to the sideline. 35 seconds to go, second and goal from the five. How many timeouts do we have left? Do you know? I'm not entirely sure if it's one or two. But we're going to no, – East Rankin's going to take one now, and I think okay. that's their final timeout of the half. 35-28 is our score. Believe it or not. Well, the Dolphins scored 70 the other 70, 70 a couple is weeks within ago. reach. And well within reach of either team. <coughs> Hopefully we'll work on some tackling during the during the halftime. It was 14-7 at the end of the first quarter. <laughs> Just to put this into perspective. I usually sit and watch the game up here when I call it with you and then I stand. <laughs> For the extra, I'm just uh, forget just the chair. Well I'm just stay standing on your feet. Six touchdowns scored in this second quarter. Three Gracious. by each club. It's like going to a TCU Oregon game, <laughs> <laughs> except with red and blue uniforms. Yes. Yeah. Third and oh, excuse me, second and five. Fake the handoff, throw the end zone, but the pass knocked Added down away. along the line of scrimmage. Fifty-six. Braden Warner. Anticipated the pass and blocked it, knocked it down. Well, that's a pretty good play. The the uh, had two receivers. I'm not sure if he was coming to the to the uh, lower or the the one further back, but uh, we had um, looks like Leek's going to spend one of their time out. So we'll take a break wow. uh, as they use that time out. Up 35-28 with 31 seconds to go before half. Baptist League Rural Health Clinics have a variety of health care options with primary care, pediatrics, and women's health. Providing care at three locations in Carthage, Walnut Grove, and Madden. Call 601 
267-1470 today to schedule your appointment. Extended hours and Saturdays are available at our primary care clinic located in Carthage. Baptist League, making your health care our number one priority. Lee County Co-op is ready for deer season. Okay, guys, I have this problem. Every year, my hunting coveralls seem to get smaller. Am I the only one that has this issue? Uh, no, no, no. I think it's the feed we're on. You know, kind of like we feed the deer all that good stuff to make them bigger. Just not in the right way. <laughs> Coming out of the timeout, a little early. Third and goal. Rolling out, Wilcox to the left, looking, 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 going to tuck it and run. Dive across the painted line. Touchdown. Touchdown, six for the Rebels. George Wilcox coming out of there, <laughs> running at full speed. Amen. Getting the six the hard way with 24 seconds to go in the quarter, he, and the Rebels are up 41-28. He put his ball on the, sh ball on the shoulder. He had just a, a wide receiver, and no, nah, he'll take that in himself. Great play. Rebel touchdowns presented by Weaver Tax and Accounting. I bet you could memorize that by now. <laughs> yeah. Point after attempt. Snap, hold, kick, up, away, and good. Rebels 42, Patriots 28. I'm not going to say uh, that it's impossible for somebody to score one more time before the halftime is over, but uh, we'd, we'd like to keep it. It's very right seldom here. that you say tw that we, we gave them 21 seconds. That's too much time on the clock. We'll lose about five or six or seven on the kickoff, so they'll they'll have an opportunity to run a play or two. Coach Pickens walking up along the numbers, talking to Matthew Nowell about what he wants him to do with this particular kickoff, and now Coach Pickens coming over to the kickoff coverage team to explain to them how they want to play this with 24 seconds left. You know, if I were Gary Daniels, I'd say, here's what Coach is saying. He thought of this last night, and this is why he's calling this in such a play. But I'm just going to trust Coach to make that yeah. call this time. This is the 13th meeting all time between Leak and East Rank, and Leak leads the series 10 games to two. The Rebels have won the last five in the series. They met on this field last year in early October. Leak outscored ERA 21-7 in the second quarter to take control and get a 45-20 win. But uh, we're already at 42-28. Mm. We're not at the halfway point yet. Moore's Pharmacy kickoff. Here's Matthew Nowell booting it high and deep. Henry will catch it at the 10. Come up the left seam, get a block, get him to the 25, and then Braden Hall meets him, and the Rebels push him back just short of the 30-yard line, and that leaves 16 seconds on the clock. But the Rebels went 53 yards on that drive into the end zone. Yes. Three-yard run from George Wilcox. Made it 42-28 after the now extra point. That's a performance therapy reset in the final seconds of the second quarter. You were talking about those throwback. Uh, you were talking about those throwback uniforms for the Patriots. I was thinking of John Hanna. Yes. 72. University of Alabama. Yes. One of the great, the probably the greatest offensive lineman of the 70s. Yes. His era. He and Jackie Slater, who played at Jackson State, who played for the Rams, yep. were perennial all-pro players. And now there's a flag. Delay. Yep. Delay of game. Walk the Patriots back inside the 25, first and 15. Yeah. Well, they were out of timeout, so didn't really have a choice there. Usually don't get those after a kickoff for turn, though. Well, I tell you, we have all earned a halftime break, that's for sure. Yes, sir. Three-man rush. Wesson to throw. Oh! Yes, nearly intercepted by Jack Harkins at the 35. Stepped in front of Bryson Lowe and nearly had a pick six just oh, right in his mitts. Oh, man. Oh, a millisecond earlier, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been another, another score. Incomplete second and 15. 12 seconds on the scoreboard clock. Wesson from the shotgun with two receivers to each side. Going to roll to the left. 
Turn, throw it, pass caught at the 40. Going up to the 41, but going down in bounds as Jace Denson gets a first down. They have just five seconds. And they apparently have a timeout left because they just used okay. it, but I would have sworn they had used three. The scoreboard clock does not register. Well, the scoreboard clock does show each team with uh, one timeout, and now the Patriots down okay. to zero, so okay. we miscount it. Uh, that's our one mistake, and it, <laughs> it didn't happen until one. Friday, or we're one up <laughs> on next week. Either way, we make them every once in a while. I'll take the rap for that one. No, I was with you. I thought... <laughs> Thought that I'm waiting to tweet this halftime score or text this halftime score to someone who's very interested in it, but I'm not uh, <laughs> willing to send, send it, it here. With five seconds left. I have it typed out as leak 42, East Rankin 28, but I am not hitting send yet. We almost saw the Rebels add another touchdown two plays ago. Could have gotten – Pick six. When's the last time you saw five receivers on one side? Yeah, they'll put uh, three linemen. No, excuse me. They'll put the, the five linemen and then five receivers to the left. Toss it quick out to Carlisle. He's going to try to get behind blockers, get to the 50 to the 45, and Garrett Joyner is going to wrap him up, and that will be the final play of tonight's first half. Plenty of fireworks. Leak 42, East Rankin. 28. We've got the Wendy's halftime coming up. It'll be an extended Wendy's halftime, so we've got a lot to talk about, a lot of things to do, and a lot of things to say, and we'll take our time doing them. We hope you'll stay with us as Leak Academy football continues from Boswell Media Sports. Dr. Ryan Anderson and his crew at Central Mississippi Animal Clinic love getting to know you and your pets. In addition to your pet's health care, they offer boarding that will be your fur baby's home away from home. Become a member of the Central Mississippi Animal Clinic family today. Download the Central Mississippi Animal Clinic app or go to centralmississippianimalclinic.com. Central Mississippi Animal Clinic, Highway 35, Carthage. Edinburgh Drugs, right in the heart of Edinburgh. They make convenience a priority for their customers with easy drive through pickup and free home or business delivery. You can also visit edinburghdrugs.com to shop for gifts and order your refills while you're there. West Side Body Shop says, let's face it, stuff happens. And when it does, they can take care of damage as small as a chip in your windshield all the way up to full collision services. Insurance claims are always welcome, too. Just be sure your first stop is West Side Body Shop in Philadelphia. They also specialize in truck accessories, including toolboxes, visors, Nerf bars, and wenches. They make your ride look cool. West Side Body Shop, just off Beacon Street on Waterview Lane, right behind the Huddle House in Philadelphia. He's headed to the end zone. To go Oil Academy. Junction and Prince Oil Fuel Champions. As you travel to the game, shop and fuel with people who are invested in your community. 60 years of fueling Central Mississippi and champions like Leak Academy. Locations are all over Mississippi. Carthage, Philadelphia, Oxford, Ridgeland, Scuba, Louisville, Newton, and Union. They also do catering. So be sure to put some Junction in your next function. It's the Junction and Prince Oil. Leak County Co-op is ready for deer season. Okay, guys, I have this problem. Every year, my hunting coveralls seem to get smaller. Am I the only one that has this issue? Uh, no, no, no. I think it's the feed we're on. You know, kind of like we feed the deer all that good stuff to make them bigger, just not in the right way. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. I'm headed to our Leak County Co-op now to buy new hunting gear and seed for our food plots. Yep, I was there yesterday, and I got mine. Leak County Co-op, Highway 16 in Carthage. Register to win a 70-inch smart TV during the end of summer savings sale at Woodstock Furniture Value Center. Bedrooms plus free mattress, $7.98. Living rooms, just $6.98. Dining sets, only $3.98. And queen mattresses, $1.99. Kings, $2.99. Plus, it's all backed by our low price and same-day delivery guarantee with no credit needed and no money down. Only at Woodstock Furniture Value Center in Meridian, Philadelphia, and WoodstockValueCenter.com. Boswell Media Sports. Welcome to the Wendy's Halftime. We're in Pelahatchee, East Rankin, and Leak. Teams are in the locker room. The uh, What we're told is 
an extravaganza of homecoming stuff about to happen on the field in front of us, but it's been quite an extravaganza of uh, football in the first half. Leak leads 42 to 28 after two quarters, and uh, we appreciate Wendy's sponsorship. Hope you'll visit Wendy's. Use the Wendy's app uh, next time you're you're hungry and you can uh, speed up that drive through line. You can go in and get it or park outside. They'll bring it to you and uh, – Use, uh, use that Wendy's app. We appreciate their sponsorship of halftime. Interview segment coming up here. We're going to talk Leak Academy cheerleading. We've got uh, Georgia Hardy and Harper Richardson up here to talk about uh, cheering. Georgia, you're going to go first? Okay. The headset is on, and here we go. Okay. Now, Georgia, how long have you been going to Leak Academy? Oh, I've been going to Leak Academy about – 13 years, 13 maybe. years from the very beginning, huh? Mm -hmm. And where do you live? I live in Philadelphia, Mississippi. Philadelphia girl on it. So how long have you been cheering? Since eighth grade, so about five years. Okay. So let's let's go ahead and, uh, and talk about this uh, championship from a few weeks back. Uh, MAIS, a game day championship in small division. Now tell folks uh, what, uh, what are the different divisions of competition in this uh in the cheer competition? Well, they're small, which we competed in, and it's 15 and lower. And it went up to medium and large groups, and it was different from how it was, how it has been in the past few years. We normally competed with 5A, 6A, which are big schools, and this year we competed in the small, which helped us, what's the word I'm looking for? It was our right division. Yeah, yeah. It was, we were where it we was, were meant to be. It was the right fit, yeah. Well, good. And so then uh, and then the game day competition, uh, you do a routine. I think we saw it uh, a couple of weeks ago at the home game with the flags and the, the music, that sort of thing. And uh, I got to say, watching it just through the, the press box here, I can see why we won the title. <laughs> <laughs> Very you. well done. Uh, who designs those uh, routines? Those routines, um, Austin McNair, our competition coach. He's located in Philadelphia at Cheer Etc. And he's great. He really is. He really makes us put forth the effort and gets that drive into us to win the competition. Okay. All right. Let's see. Now, let's hand it off to Harper here. We may go back and forth a little bit, take a little of the pressure off. I've got a question for Harper, but we're on the same subject. Hey, Harper. Hey. How long have you been cheering? Um, since seventh grade. How long have you been at Leak Academy? Um, 11, 12 years. Okay. Good. Now, let's talk about that competition. When you performed at the competition, did did you individually or you all together, did you feel like you gave that was the best you'd ever done it? Did you feel like, hey, we might have won this thing? Or were you surprised? Yeah, okay. So, when we first came off the mat, we all felt – we didn't know how we, tr we truly felt, and then Austin just came out, and he was like, I don't understand why y'all are sad. That was the best I've ever performed in, pra like, in practice total. Like, that was amazing. It was like, y'all hit ground zero. Like, that was the best I've ever performed, and we all just smiled and, like, screamed. It was amazing. So how long did you have to wait from uh, doing the performance till they announced the results and the, the winners? So we performed at, like, 8, 9.30, and the awards were, like, at – 3.30. Oh, wow. So, so you had to go a long, long time. So yes. you had plenty of time to kind of almost forget about what happened. Yes. And you watched so many others do their routines and all of that. So it wasn't a thing where you necessarily knew when you'd done it, this is it. Yes. Because <laughs> you, then you see so many other people perform. I understand that. But uh, but uh, tell me, what was the uh, what did it feel like to you when you heard Leak Academy called out as the winner in the division? It felt – so unreal because we've all especially like me in Georgia we've we were here from the beginning and so just to hear our names as first place um made us feel I think complete in a way yeah yeah because the because um is you're both seniors and are you I, both I'm seniors a you're a junior okay okay so so you still got some time here so it, I know for I know for seniors it really is yes, so because this is the I, last time you get to do it. And I'm but, so uh, glad that Georgia got to experience that because yeah. this is her last go around. Do you know uh, you know what you want to do after you finish uh, high school? I do. I'm thinking about going into nursing. Oh, great. Great. Okay, let's hand it back to Georgia here. She's had time to 
breathe and collect her thoughts. All right, Georgia, speaking as a senior, what was it like hearing that announcement of uh, Leak Academy cheer squad you know, in that game day championship? It was, it was like a relief yeah. from all the time and hours we practiced and all the sacrifices we made for it. It was like a relief knowing that we got what we deserved. What's the practice schedule like? Uh, when, when, do you, when do you start? I assume you start in the summer or maybe even before that, oh, yeah. getting ready for the fall. I think this past year we started in April, practices Mondays and Wednesdays every week. And once it got closer to competition, we had practices about every other day and showcases, and I think we were very prepared. Yeah, obviously so. So what's something about uh, cheering that, uh, that maybe that your average fan in the stands uh, – might be surprised to learn because uh, people think, oh, yeah, y'all get to wear the, the cute outfits and uh, pull your hair back and uh, be bright and exciting, but uh, there's a lot more to it than that, isn't it? There is. It's, it's a lot of sacrifices and organization for putting things together for your school and making sure everybody has a spirit and hyping up the po football players to make sure they can win their game. And we put in so much more work than people think we really do. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you said that because I think that, that needs to be said, needs to be appreciated uh, more than it is. So uh, thanks and congratulations for that work. So uh, what's, uh, what goes on now that we're getting toward the end of football season and then there's this thing we like called basketball going on. Uh, what, what, how does your practice schedule and approach change with, uh, with basketball season coming? Um, it stays about the same. We usually stop working on stunts and mainly work on dances for halftime, and we have to learn a whole new set of cheers for the basketball team rather than the football teams. Good. All right. Now, what are your plans after you graduate from Lee? I plan to go to East Central and be a Centralette. Oh, after good. that, I plan to go to Mississippi State and major in fashion merchandising. I like you even more after <laughs> saying both those things. Yeah, East Central's a great place. Uh, I didn't go there, but I did go to Mississippi State. And, uh, but uh, love both those institutions, so that's great. And uh, let's, let's, give, let's give Harper one more uh, time to – we want to give equal time. All right, now I'm going to ask you a question that I ask everybody who comes up in the interview, whether they're a coach, a teacher, student, whatever. Uh, since this is sponsored by Wendy's, I like to ask the question, what is your go-to order at Wendy's? Okay, so I love Wendy's. I always make my parents go get it for me. I always get a classic chicken sandwich. <laughs> the classic chicken sandwich, okay. Mm -hmm. You like the fries? Your fry I do. Person? Okay. All right, then, so somebody could uh, go and the Wendy's at uh, Philadelphia, Carthage, Forest, wherever – and just order the Harper special and they'd get Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. Good. Uh, okay. Now, uh, one more question for you. What about this first half? We, oh, we scored a lot of points, aren't yes. we? Yes. We are all so excited. <laughs> I know. We, if we can keep scoring like this, we'll be fine. We just uh, do need to find a way to stop them a little bit and we'll feel a little bit better about it. But it's uh, – you can tell um, it's really fun to watch this team. It's gotten so much better. It is, has gotten since the so start. much better. And I feel like we're way more prepared than we were. Yeah. And it's just uh, preparation, practice, a young team coming together. It's the same thing y'all experience. Uh, I know uh, uh, your routines and, and, uh, and what you do on the sidelines, you count on it being better in October than it is in August. Yes. And uh, all that comes from a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication. We appreciate what you do for Leak Academy and both Harper, you and Georgia have represented yourselves, your families really well, and Leak Academy well, and the cheer squad really well. And uh, we've got uh, Dee Dee Davis up here with them as a sponsor. Thank you. You want to spend 10 minutes on the radio? <laughs> no. <laughs> she doesn't matter. We'll, everybody, wants to, everybody likes to hear them more than folks like us. But thanks for your work and what you do as well. Uh, thanks for uh, coming up and talking to us on the Wendy's Halftime, and uh, y'all go enjoy the rest of the game and the rest of the season, okay? Thank you for having us. All right. Thanks for thanks to our guests here at Halftime, Harper Richardson and Georgia Hardy, and uh, Dee Dee Davis, the sponsor of Cheerleaders, uh, joining us here on the Wendy's Halftime. We'll take another break and come back with more of Wendy's Halftime. Leak leads at the break, 42-28. Back with more Leak Academy football after this. 
We were celebrating a birthday, so we took the family out to dinner at a steakhouse. You may have known it as Lee's, but now it's a new building with a new name. The same great chef and owner, Artie Reed, and Hometown Prime. My beef filet was cooked perfectly, and we can't wait to go back. Steak, seafood, the best sweet tea, and of course, homemade desserts. Delicious. For daily specials and hours, Google Hometown Prime and like them on Facebook. Hometown Prime is ready for you. Highway 21, Sebastopol. Now, Bob, when we started the Bring Your Kid to Work Day, this wasn't exactly what we had in mind. I'm sorry, but they're my babies. We're about to go grab lunch and then head to the farm. Well, where are you headed? Rosebud General Store out there in Rosebud on Highway 487 East. Nothing but the best for my babies. They got everything you need for your farming family. Well, your calf sure is sweet. Does she have a name? That there's the cow patty. Whoa, whoa, let me get this straight. You named your cow patty? No, sir. It's what you stepped in. Ew. Rosebud General Store, Highway 487 East. When dealing with something as complex as taxes and payroll can be, you can turn to Weaver Tax and Accounting to make things easier. Their professional staff works diligently to make sure your business and personal returns are complete and finished in a timely manner. Weaver Tax and Accounting will also execute your bookkeeping and payroll, bringing you the best in tax services since 1979. Weaver Tax and Accounting. 20 South Street, Sebastopol, and 109 Chadwick Avenue in Walnut Grove. Is this a familiar sound that seems to be never-ending? Money for this, money for that. Don't worry. East Side Pawn and Gun to the rescue. Take your pawn to them in exchange for the loan you need to help you through unexpected seasons. Confidentiality will always be respected when you do business with East Side Pawn and Gun. So what are you waiting for? Stop the fretting and get on over there. East Side Pawn and Gun, Highway 16, Carthage. Boswell Media Sports. Philip Palmer Tree and Scott Engel with the headsets on. John Alden Crosby at the action camera. Billy Steen running things at Boswell Media Sports Studios. Leak Academy football coming your way on this Friday, October 6th. And it's 42-28. The Rebels score six touchdowns in the first half and lead it by 14. There's still a lot of football left to be played here. And there's still a lot of homecoming stuff left to go on on this field. I cannot even begin to describe. For those of you who uh, are not seeing it, uh, you may see it from the backside from where our camera is. But uh, there, uh, it's uh, sort of a world tour. I see sumo wrestlers. I see hula skirts. I see ninjas. I see kangaroos and koalas. I see the uh, Statue of Liberty. I see pandas. Uh, looks like Irish dancers, leprechauns, there's a jeep on the field, there are uh, people in animal costumes, people who look like flight attendants and uh, guards at uh, Buckingham Palace, uh, I mentioned the mariachi band and some uh, bullfighters, and uh, uh, and then there are the, the young ladies in the lovely uh, formal wear gowns who at some time are going to get their moment in the spotlight as well. So th th this is unbelievable what we're seeing. But uh, and, and we could say that about the first half of action as well. <laughs> it's been kind of unbelievable what we've seen. Uh, I'm going to give you the scoreboard, and then we'll bring Scott back. Uh, he's still adding up stats, which you got to have your calculator out for, uh, for the kind of offensive fireworks we've seen tonight. But let's go to the scoreboard, and we'll tell you that you can go to kicks96news.com and click on the Friday night scoreboard. And that will uh, be up all the way through the uh, through tomorrow, so you can get up in the morning and check on scores from all over Mississippi. We'll focus on things that are a little bit closer to East Central Mississippi. Here are some MAIA scores, halftime scores: Simpson and Lamar. The Cougars lead Lamar 14-13 at the half. Lamar lost their opening game, and they've won six games in a row since then, including beating JA and beating Kapaya last week, but they're in a tussle with Simpson, 14-13. Simpson leads at the half over in Meridian. Four minutes left in the second. MRA up 21-14 on Hartfield over in Flowood. So that one late second quarter. Expected that to be uh, a close, tense ball game. Uh, Jackson Prep having no trouble with Presbyterian Christian, 28-0. Patriots uh, lead that game, and then J.A., Playing at home against Starkville Academy, leading 22 to nothing. 
Let's see. Oh, I see an update. Uh, MRA and Hartfield tied 28-28 at the half. And now um, Lamar Simpson, that's changed there in the third quarter. Uh, Lamar 20, Simpson 14. So Lamar's uh, jumped out in front. So that's a look at some of the MAIS games that we're following. Uh, closer to home, Lake leading Newton third quarter 16-12. Oh, and one game that was played yesterday, a big rivalry over in Winston County. Noxapater beats Nanawaya 22-20. Uh, so that's uh, that's excitement in Noxapater. And then uh, looking around uh, Louisville, uh, no trouble with Kosciuszko tonight, leading 31-0 over in Louisville. Newton County and Choctaw Central still playing a close one. Warriors hosting that one, but it's the Cougars up 12-7 in the third quarter. Taylorsville leading West Lauderdale 18-14 in the third quarter. That's a little bit of a surprise. Morton leading Mendenhall 2013 at uh, or in the third quarter now. Tupelo's extending their lead over Madison Central 14-3. And uh, looking through the app here. Union and Forest tied 14-14 at halftime. Warren Central having a great year. They're leading Ridgeland 28-0 at the break. And a couple of more. Uh, Adams Christian just uh, sticking it to uh, Emmett Christian or Emmett School 35-0. And we mentioned MRA tied 28-28 at the half with Hartfield. Philadelphia and Sebastopol in the close one. The Bobcats now in front 21-19 right before halftime. Park Lane leading Oak Forest 26-7. French Camp and Ethel uh, still a 0-0 first quarter score, the last one that we have there. And we're 42-28 here with Leak leading East Rankin. We'll take another break and we'll come back and bring Scott Engel in and talk about the story of this first half and some of the the big offensive numbers that both these ball clubs are putting up. Rebels up 14 at the break. Lake Academy football continues from Basel Media Sports. Dr. Ryan Anderson and his crew at Central Mississippi Animal Clinic love getting to know you and your pets. In addition to your pet's health care, they offer boarding that will be your fur baby's home away from home. Become a member of the Central Mississippi Animal Clinic family today. Download the Central Mississippi Animal Clinic app or go to centralmississippianimalclinic.com. Central Mississippi Animal Clinic, Highway 35, Carthage. Edinburgh Drugs, right in the heart of Edinburgh. They make convenience a priority for their customers with easy drive through pickup and free home or business delivery. You can also visit edinburghdrugs.com to shop for gifts and order your refills while you're there. Patient education is very important to owner and pharmacist Cody Coffin. She's happy to explain your medication and how to take them. Health Mart. Taking the time to listen and care. Edinburgh Drugs, your independently owned Health Mart Pharmacy. Highway 16, Edinburgh. Total Pain Care's mission has always been to reduce suffering, increase function, and provide a better quality of life for every patient. Dr. Eric Pearson and Dr. C.C. Martin are committed to treating patients with the highest standard of care. Total Pain Care has full-time clinics in Meridian and Philadelphia, providing a convenient option for Neshoba County and surrounding areas. Total Pain Care, located in the Medical Arts Clinic at Neshoba General Hospital, here to help you get back to living your best life. Premier Medical Group, PMG, your good health is our priority. Did you know you do not have to drive for specialized care? Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko partners with specialists in urology, cardiology, neurology, and orthopedics. Have your primary care provider refer you to a PMG specialist today. Premier Medical Group, at Wendy's, you don't need a psychic to tell you your hamburger's gonna taste great. Excuse me? Because every square hamburger is a sign you're getting the best. Did someone say sign? Four corners of hot and juicy fresh beef that make deliciousness its destiny every time. Hold on. I'm getting fresh beef. When you want the best hamburger, square's the beef. Choose wisely. Choose, Choose Wendy's Dave Single. 
I am a psychic, after all. Fresh beef available in the contiguous U.S., Alaska, and Canada. Boswell Media Sports. Welcome back to the Wendy's Halftime from Pelahatchee. And the greatest show on earth going on uh, below us here. We still have not uh, finished the presentation of the world tour and then the homecoming maids and their escorts uh, still to come here. So there's a whole lot left to uh, to do. And I think uh, both both East Rankin and Leak uh, coaches are probably, uh, probably appreciate a little bit of extra time in some respects because – they got to work on some. They got to make some defensive adjustments. Both of them, don't they, Scott? Look at one in one locker room. He said, "Gentlemen, we must we, we must cover the pass. We must cover receivers and the lock other locker room at league. We must tackle the runner. We must lock up." And so we, they've got a good forty minutes to to work on this. But uh, uh, woo! Well, we, that, that's the this is the most I've been to several games this year, uh, both JUCO college. And even senior college, uh, Division One and two games. I've, I, this is the most points at halftime I've seen this yeah. year. Yeah, in fact, there were 49 points scored in the second quarter alone wow. <laughs> combined <laughs> with these two teams. Let's give a, a quick recap here, and then uh, Scott will throw out some of the the eye popping stats of this first half. Leak scored on their opening possession after forcing a punt and uh, got. Down the field, got a 19-yard pass from QB1 George Wilcox to Jack Harkins to take a 7-0 lead with 6-17 to go in the first quarter after the Matthew Nowell extra point. But uh, the Patriots uh, punted it back to the Rebels, and the Rebels went on the march again, got inside the five, and Charlie Brantley ran it in from the three and the Nowell extra point made it 14-0 with 37 seconds to go in the quarter. Rebels kicked it off. The kick was returned to the 30-yard line, and then it took the Patriots just one play to answer. First carry of the night from Brandon Loper, the sophomore, uh, hit the left side and got to the edge 70 yards later. He was still running into the end yes. zone, and it was 14-7, and that sort of served notice that game was on, and Brandon Loper took over this game in a lot of ways from that point. Yeah. But Lee got it back and scored on the second play, or maybe it was the first play of the of scrimmage for the second quarter. And it was Ben Jackson getting wide open in the middle of the field for a 62-yard pass from Wilcox. And Nowell's extra point made it 21-7 at the 11:49 mark of the second quarter. But then it took less than a minute for East Rankin to answer. Loper goes in from the nine as they went down the field uh, with ease on the ground and made it 21-14. But Leak answered in uh, just two and a half minutes. Weaver on a great diving catch in the back of the end zone on a beautifully thrown pass from over the middle from Wilcox for the third touchdown throw of the night for QB1. 20 yards on the connection, 28-14 with eight and a half minutes to go after the Nowell extra point. But then... Two minutes and two seconds later, East Rankin moved the numbers on the scoreboard. Loper on a 21-yard run around the left end. Going in the end zone, 28-21. Leak answers in less than two minutes. Brantley crashing in from the three. All the extra points were good in this first half, 35-21. Then with about a minute and 17 seconds, East Rankin narrowed the deficit down to seven again and it was Luke Wesson on a read option keeper going in from the two standing up into the end zone 35 28 but Leak managed the time and the field position very well got a great return from Grayson McDonald up to about the 47 yard line and then they went on a 53 yard touchdown march scored with 24 seconds on third and goal Wilcox rolling out to his left can't find an open receiver, but he just turned it upfield and stretched it across the painted line for six, and it's 42-28, and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to the that. end of the game after, uh, certainly after Lee wins this thing to hear. That's the longest. <laughs> Your report was almost long as this halftime. 70 <laughs> points scored in the first half. <laughs> Ten touchdowns between these two teams. Talk about some of the offensive numbers uh, for us, if you would, I Scott. have some group numbers. Uh, We've ran the ball 14 times, 109 yards. Uh, that's pretty good per carry average. Um, uh, quarterback George Wilcox has thrown the ball 24 times, completed 18, 
and uh, for uh, 203 yards. So as of right now, 38 plays, 392 yards. Uh, wow. Coming into the night, George uh, was 90 of 165 for 1,225 yards. As of halftime, he has increased his yardage account passing for the year by 21.2%. Wow. So this could be a uh, – and look, I think we've got a lot more fireworks to go. Um, uh, it's fortunate that um, – it's almost like they were swapping – Score so we scored at the end of the half and we get the ball to begin the second half and I think that uh, barring any any major meltdowns that's going to play into the results of the second half. Wow, that's all you can <laughs> say to that. And two quarters more to go. Um, let's do this uh, for the fans because we do we do have to stretch this Wendy's halftime out because we are no control over when the homecoming festivities in. I think we are getting close to the crowning of the homecoming queen but uh you haven't seen either team appear out of the field house yet so we're still away yeah. from the start of the second half even though the clock says a minute 28 it's actually stopped <laughs> there's no right. need to <laughs> yeah you can it's going to be over when it's over uh at homecoming in pelahatchee but uh Let's talk playoffs here. We are in week eight of the season, just two games left. The Rebels are back home next week to play Lamar, and Lamar's in quite a fight right now uh, with Simpson. And speaking of Simpson, the Rebels will play Simpson the following week in week 10 in Mendenhall. So two big games coming up. And you know uh, in MAIS 5A, uh, playoff seeding is determined by the famous PowerPoint system. And you can go on the MAIS website and uh, you can look at the math and it explains it. I couldn't explain it. If, if I start explaining it, it would last even longer than the East Rankin homecoming. But having said that, uh, talking about East Rankin and, uh, and Pillow here, I mean, excuse me, uh, Leak here. Uh, Leak right now is 11th among the 12 teams. So if the season ended today, uh, before this ballgame, the Rebels would be in the playoffs and be playing at the number six uh, team uh, who in current standings is Bio Academy. The top four teams get uh, a bye, and that right now coming into action tonight, that would be Lamar, Park Lane, Starkville, and Kapaya, one through four with opening round byes. Then uh, home games in the first round would be Silliman, Bio, Simpson, and Oak Forest and then playing at those schools, uh, ACCS, Magnolia Heights, Leak, and Pillow. Uh, Cathedral and Heritage are uh, just lurking behind, uh, sort of like the also receiving votes category in the top 20. So if, if they got a couple of key wins and some of those 10, 11, 12 teams faltered down the stretch, uh, they could earn themselves a playoff uh, berth. So if we were... If we had ended the season, we'd be in uh, well, we'd be in Cleveland right now playing right. Uh, bio for the second time this year. But a uh, chance for the Rebels to move up, and particularly with games against Lamar and Simpson coming up. If you if you come up and uh, knock out one of those teams, that's going to be worth a lot of points yes. and would uh, make your playoff matchup a whole lot better as uh, as the season winds down. But uh, right now in MAIS uh, 5A District 2, Lamar and Simpson are tied with first place. Of course, they're meeting right now. They're each 1-0 and in the league. Kapaya in second place at 2-1. and They're hosting Greenville Christian tonight, so they're playing out of district. And then Leak at 0-1 and, and East Rankin at 0-2. Uh, so this is a battle to uh, get out of the cellar yes, and uh, get a leg up. And you win this game, Leak's uh, getting pretty close to clinching a spot in the playoffs because even if you lose those last two games, Scott, uh, you know, the system uh, rewards you for um, playing the better teams. Right. So uh, losing, even if you lose to a Simpson or a Lamar along the way, it doesn't hurt you that much. But uh, Leak has really fought back, and this is a totally different team from what we were seeing in August, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm looking at the, you know, the 40-10 the, the loss at Jackson Academy. I said, I said, boss, we got a long way to go. Start well. We started seeing some, some things there, and I said, if we could just two or three things, then buy you great team. Hell, we started playing teams to halftime, then forty twenty, 
and then Union held the number one undefeated 2A public school team to a real close, and one player for Union broke that with about two, two, two or three touchdowns second half. And from there on out, we've been in every ball game. So I think we, we've just seen steady increment, and you expect that, but but with a team with fewer numbers, um, healthy quarterback, linemen are getting more confident. Defense, that's always a, a, a fight. Uh, tackle to tackle up front, not giving up big play. You know, the big plays we've given up last night or just or tonight are just not tackling plays. Uh, four or five broken tackles. We've not just let anybody behind us for the big gain. So, uh, look, League Academy is the, the coaches, and you can hear that. I was listening a little bit of the pregame and how the coach breaks down. You know, this week and just takes a touch of next week to meditate on and. And they're doing all the things. So I'm as the teams come back on the field finally after we've toured the entire world. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to the adjustments they both have made. And and I'll say this, not taking anything away from East Rankin. You know they they've been counting on their big plays from their backs, either 35 up the middle or 24 to break a big play. We've got six touchdowns, 50% through the air, 50% on the ground. Three different receivers, two different uh, uh, on the ground. Yeah, we've we've got option. We got more options than than East Rankin does, and those are just things that it takes to be competitive. Yeah, you feel like if Leak can adjust uh, and make those stops, make those tackles, and make them work their way down the field instead of giving up these big plays. Yes, that. Um, Leaks got, certainly got the advantage. Things tilted in the Rebels' direction in this second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now to give their coaches credit, um, you know, I, I spent you know the better part of a decade on the sidelines with Jeff Breland, uh, who's offensive. Uh, I don't know if he's the offensive coordinator for East Rankin, but I know he helps with with the offense there. They're going to they're going to make some adjustments too. But yeah. uh, but man, Brian Pickens is a he's a man among men, and I'm looking forward to what he and Corey and the other coaches uh, do at halftime. We'll take a final break in this extended Wendy's halftime. The teams are out stretching, and we are not far away from the kickoff of the second half. Just going to be a late night tonight. <laughs> a lot of the games we're covering are in the fourth quarter now, yep. and we had started the third. <laughs> and that's just uh, that's just what it is here with the extended homecoming, uh, the longest on record as far as far uh, as far as I can tell. But we'll take uh, another break and come back as Leak Academy football continues. Baptist League Rural Health Clinics have a variety of health care options with primary care, pediatrics, and women's health. Providing care at three locations in Carthage, Walnut Grove, and Madden. Call 601-267-1470 today to schedule your appointment. Extended hours and Saturdays are available at our primary care clinic located in Carthage. Baptist League making your health care our number one priority. Edinburgh Drugs, right in the heart of Edinburgh. They make convenience a priority for their customers with easy drive through pickup and free home or business delivery. You can also visit edinburghdrugs.com to shop for gifts and order your refills while you're there. Patient education is very important to owner and pharmacist Cody Coffin. She's happy to explain your medication and how to take them. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. Edinburgh Drugs, your independently owned Health Mart pharmacy. Highway 16, Edinburgh. Dr. Ryan Anderson and his crew at Central Mississippi Animal Clinic love getting to know you and your pets. In addition to your pet's health care, they offer boarding that will be your fur baby's home away from home. Become a member of the Central Mississippi Animal Clinic family today. Download the Central Mississippi Animal Clinic app or go to centralmississippianimalclinic.com. Central Mississippi Animal Clinic, Highway 35, Carthage. My knee rehab was 100% successful thanks to performance therapy. They sat down with me and created a plan to ensure I would achieve my personal rehabilitation goals and they encouraged me to get the most out of every session. Performance therapy provided plenty of material for me to continue my rehab in between sessions too. Hopefully I don't have to see them in the future, but if I did, I would definitely choose performance therapy again. For more information, go to performancetherapyms.com. Performance Therapy, Carthage, Philadelphia, and Forest. Moore's Pharmacy in Carthage, Sebastopol, and Walnut Grove appreciate you, their customers. We have a beautiful selection of gifts with free gift wrapping. 
We are one of the only pharmacies around to offer compounding and woman's hormone replacement therapy. Moore's Pharmacy accepts all insurance, including Medicaid. Our two-lane drive through and prescription synchronization will make your visit very convenient. Come see us. We have the shortest wait time in town and a professional staff to assist you. Moore's Pharmacy, Highway 16, Carthage. Boswell Media Sports. Second half about to start. That's right. I said it. Second half about to start <laughs> between Leak and East Rank. And the Rebels lead the Patriots 42-28. We've had the the longest halftime show ever. And it was it was really well done. We've been kind of cheeky about it. But um, and there, if you're watching on the Enberg Drugs video, you're seeing uh, the uh, uh, halftime uh, homecoming tradition in East Rank. And that's the sweeping up of the glitter. That they're doing it finally. Uh, you know, you got the egg bowl, the iron family. bowl, the glitter bowl. Yeah, 2023. this is the glitter bowl. I like that. That's okay. good. You're welcome. Well, uh, <laughs> the bucket that has the glitter in it, the winner will get it. Yes, it has been a 38 minute halftime, according to Coach Robbie. Oh, the- <laughs> and now, <laughs> I hope you're watching this I've on video. I've seen it folks. all, boss. The Patriot football team is now <laughs> in the glitter pickup business. So we're going to be about 40 minutes of <laughs> halftime. There ought to be a law against it, i got to say. At least I'm <laughs> going to be thinking that on the on my uh, drive home tonight. Well, I'll tell you what. Those football players made a dent. Look at that. They got that it is. You know, usually you see that after a Super Bowl, after the SEC championship, after the, the big rivalry game. They just did it at halftime. You could tell Scott's an Alabama fan because he's seen that a lot. I, <laughs> as a Mississippi State man, I thought, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I have yeah, seen yeah. that on TV. Oh, <laughs> I just hadn't man. seen it come out What about out Super on my Bowl? Team. We'll just go pro. There Super go, Bowl. Pro. What about the Super Bowl? <laughs> hey, Scott can, uh, <laughs> Scott's got nothing to be ashamed of. They own the state of Mississippi again. I was at a meeting uh, at a Bible study a Wednesday night, and a resident of Alabama came in and said, okay. <laughs> we own the state of Mississippi, and I said, well, you do. I said, the bank wants some payments on the first of the month. Whoa, so. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, we barely barely got the mortgage. We, we almost got got, but, yeah. But Here we go. They call them the twin states for a reason. We're all Finally in Finally start the east side pawning gun third quarter. The Rebels will receive the kickoff from the toe of Toler Logan. He'll pooch it out toward the 30-yard line, going to hit off the ground. Charlie Brantley scoops it up, and he is hit by Carlisle and pushed back. Stopped the forward progress, stopped at the 26-yard line. That's where L.A. will start, leading 42-28 as we start at last the third quarter. At two minutes till nine. Three rushing touchdowns, three passing touchdowns. Or, no, what? that doesn't quite add up. I'm still missing one. Four rushing touchdowns. Okay. Yeah. For Leak. Two wide receivers. Hand off Charlie Brantley first down, but red shirts mm. in his way, and he loses one, maybe two on first down. 51. Uh, Colt Butler stopping up that run up the middle. Loss of two, second and 12. Weaver splits out to the left, Nowell to the right. Pistol set with H-back set to either side. Wilcox looking to throw. Pass tipped, knocked away, incomplete intended for Nowell along the first down marker. Third and long now for L.A. Yeah, that was uh, tipped up in the air, and no one knew exactly which way to go. Leak behind and Behind the chains here, two receivers to each side. Blitz coming, picked up, but now ducking under the pressure and going down, sacked back at the 15-yard line is Wilcox. First sack of the night. Kurt Buck Burks got back there, but he had others coming behind him as they uh, overwhelmed the Rebel protection that time and forced the punt. Should be good field position for East Rankin coming out of this. Caden Kopf stands at his own 45, waiting the Seth Martin punt. This is the first punt the Rebels have 
uh, put in the air tonight. Yep. It's like East Rankin came out with a lot of a enthusiasm Warner, there. Warner Young going to snap it back. Does. The punt's away oh. under pressure, and they run into him and knock him down. The ball hits at the 38 and rolls to the 44 in league territory. They'll down it there. Let's see the penalty, though. That has to be 15 yards. It's I would think it was because he came into him hard straight up the middle. Seth Martin yeah. coming off the field. And fortunate it wasn't blocked. Little gimpy. It is indeed personal foul. Yeah. Roughing the kicker. So Leak will accept the penalty. Will that be first It's going to be first down. Yep. All right. Personal foul. Well, they, they would have had it by the yardage anyway. Okay. But personal foul penalties result in automatic first down in high school. Uh, pass interference does not because that's not a personal foul. Gotcha. Got that clarified a couple of weeks ago after get, I think we I got confused yep. about that a couple of weeks or at least had the question. The Rebels take over. Central Mississippi Anvil Clinic first and 10 from the 30. Fresh set of downs. Wilcox going to throw out pattern right side taken by Weaver. He's up 40, 45, staying in bounce, 50, and takes two Patriots to get him down on the near sideline in East Rankin territory at the 48. That's a Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first down pickup of 22. Tackle made by Taylor Woods, Caden Kopf. Again, two receivers split to each side. Wilcox with a quick snap. Looks left. Throws over the middle. Complete at the 40 to Nowell. He gets rocked at the 40. Knocked down hard by the safety, Bryson Lowe. But they pick up seven on first down. Oh, terrible spot. My goodness. He's oh, gracious. a yard and a half, two yards behind where he should be. That is awful spotting by the officials. So it's second and four. But the throw deep oh. on target at the 25 to Nowell. He's at the 15, breaks loose, 10, 5, and he's wrestled down short of the goal line right around the 4. What a throw and great running after the catch by Nowell. He threaded that needle between the safety and the cornerback and that receiver. Man, that was a fine throw. From the 36 down to the 5, 31 yards on that play. Brantley, the running back at the left hip of Wilcox from the left hash. Handoff, stretching right side. Brantley coming around, looking at the five, bangs into a defender along the one-yard line, and he stopped just short of the goal. Gain of four. Grayson McDonald and Kobe Kemp come in. They're going to bring in the power lineup here. Already got Ben Jackson and Major Chandler in. The four horsemen set here. Keeper lowering his head and going across the goal line in for six. Some jawing going on afterwards. Six for the Rebels. Second touchdown run of the night for George Wilcox. The Rebels extend the lead out to 48-28. Three minutes and five seconds on that drive. A lot of work for Matthew Nowell. Snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is up, and it's good with 8.55 to go third quarter. Leak stretches the lead 49-28 back in 60. If spending days looking for a top dollar for your timber has left you feeling like you're barking up the wrong tree, then I would listen closely. Welch Forest Products in Union does it better than anyone and with the least possible damage to your property. Whether it's management, forestry care, pine plantation, thinning, or site prep, the last number you'll dial is 601-774-8200. They buy land with or without timber, too. Call Bo Welch now at Welch Forest Products today. 601-774-8200. He's headed to the end zone. Go down. The Junction and Prince Oil Fuel Champions. As you travel to the game, shop and fuel with people who are invested in your community. 60 years of fueling Central Mississippi and champions like Leak Academy. Locations are all over Mississippi. Carthage, Philadelphia, Oxford, Ridgeland, Scuba, Louisville, Newton, and Union. They also do catering. So be sure to put some Junction in your next function. It's the Junction and Prince Oil. Boswell Media Sports. 
Owl with the Morris Pharmacy kickoff. He puts a great leg into it. Sends Henry back, get, catches it on the numbers at the 10. Coming across the right side. Rebels slow him down as he crosses the 20. And then stop him close by their 21-yard line. Braden Welch, Grayson McDonald, Mathen Weaver, John Donovan all getting down there for the league coverage team. Here are the Patriots. We'll see them offensively for the first time with 8.47 to go. Leak got their opening drive of the half extended on a roughing the kicker penalty on the punt. Had a deep pass to Matthew Nowell that got them set up first and goal inside the five, and Wilcox took it in from the one. That's a performance therapy reset, 49-28. Quick throw left side. Ball bobbled and dropped by Jace Denson. Short of the 30-yard line right in front of Joshua Gray. Would have been tackled for about a seven or eight gain if we'd have caught that ball. But Second and 10, line of scrimmage the 22, right? Equidistant from the sideline stripes. One receiver left, two right. H-back set to the left. Handoff will go to the running back, Wilkerson. He's hit as he gets the stripe of the 25. He fights ahead for one more yard to the 26. Gang tackled. By the Rebels, Tyler Winstead, Garrett Joyner, Hagen Bobo. Third down and six, pick up a four. Got to get to the 32 for the first down. This time receivers two to each side. Wilkerson, the running back, set next to the quarterback, Luke Wesson. The freshman calls the signals, looks to his left. They snap it directly back to Wilkerson, and he just stumbles mm. forward and loses two, maybe three yards. Yeah. So things blow up there on East Rankin on third down. Coach and staff thought somebody had moved up on the line. Fourth down. Matthew Weaver and Charlie Brantley will drop back deep. Safety position for Leak to receive the punt from Will McGee. Good response from the league defense, three and out. McGee, high oh. snap over his head. Ball rolling loose inside the five. He picks it up and he's tackled at the one yard line right. by Grayson McDonald. Couldn't ask for anything better right there. The yes. Rebels will take over after the bad snap and the tackle. They'll have first and goal at the one in the David Barham Insurance Red Zone. That was as close to a safety as you can get. That is a short one yard. The East Rankin on their sideline, they would much rather have had the safety because now <laughs> the Rebels are about, oh, six inches from getting six. There you go. Looks like they brought the heavy set in. Caden Chipley, the running back. Keeper, Wilcox, he goes in behind. The block's in front of him on the right side. That's yep. six for the Rebels. Third touchdown run tonight for QB1. And now the Rebels have opened up a lead 55-28 with the extra point pending. Yeah, a few years ago, that would have been called Tim Tebow Wright. Somebody's uh, not out there who should be. And we've got, excuse me, 12 seconds to get him set before he's the guy. Now they've got 11 out there with three on the play clock. The extra point is blocked by Kurt Burks. 55-28 the score with 7.02 to go in the third. Premier Medical Group, PMG. Your good health is our priority. Did you know you do not have to drive for specialized care? Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko partners with specialists in urology, cardiology, neurology, and orthopedics. Have your primary care provider refer you to a PMG specialist today. Premier Medical Group, PMG. Good health is our priority. 
Neshoba County Co-op knows that opening day at dove season is one of the most anticipated and popular hunting days of the year. It brings family and friends together. Dove season's one of the first hunting opportunities of fall as the long and hot Mississippi summer ends. Get on over to Neshoba County Co-op today. They've got everything you need to make the big day a huge success. Neshoba County Co-op, 338 Main Street, Philadelphia. Boswell Media Sports. Once again, Lee lines up to kick it off, leading 55-28. Kickoffs presented by Morris Pharmacy. Now will sends it. To Carlisle, this time taken at the 14. He comes up center of the field. Gets smacked hard by Kobe Kemp at the 27-yard line. And then there's some extracurricular activity going on, but that uh, tackle out in the open field got people's attention. That was um, – it wasn't an immovable object versus an unstoppable force. The unstoppable force got stopped. <laughs> With a little extracurricular there Woo. at the end. Stopped at the 27-yard line. That was the slobber knocker of the hit right there. Man. First and 10, ERA. Moving right to left. 6.56 to go. Rebels have stretched it out to 55-28. We'll get you a performance therapy reset in just a minute. There Here's you go. Loper going off right tackle. Stood up by Tyler Winstead, who... Fights him and just uh, gets him moving to his right and down to the ground after a pickup of just one. And that's what you, you don't worry about planting him. You just grab him. Uh, good form. Didn't let him buy him. Held on to him. Waiting for the team to help him. Second and nine. Loper around the left side trying to sweep. Matthew Dowell hits him at the 27, and he's driven down with help from Joshua Gray. Great job stretching it out to the side, and now Loper is slow to get up, holding his head. While he's being looked at, uh, here's a final from the scoreboard. We're going to be announcing a lot of final scores tonight because we had a 40-minute halftime. Right. But uh, Louisville dispatches with their rival. Uh, eight straight win against Kosciuszko. They win 41 nothing tonight. Mm -hmm. That's a big district matchup. And yep. MHSAA 4A, and up on his feet, trotting off the field. Looks okay as, as Loper, and that's good to see. Yeah. Loss of one on the play, third, and about nine and a half from the 27. Empty set, the backfield. Wesson moving to his right, pressure chasing him. He's going to tuck and run. Lots of green in front of him, 35, 40, gets hit, and... Angled out of bounds. Big run yeah. to the 45-yard line. Pickup of 23 yards and a first down. And Coach Josh Ray is about to explode on this near sideline. Defensive end, do not pursue deeper than the deepest man. That's and, it. <laughs> and that quarterback took advantage of his miscalculation and got a first down. Out of it after From the, the 45, Wilkerson handoff hit in the backfield. Got hit first by John Donovan, broke loose, but then Kobe Kemp was waiting yep. to put the finishing hit on him, and he picked up just one to the 46. Yeah, it looked like Donovan shot the gap there and just met him at the mesh point. Lucky he didn't fumble. Second down, nine. Four-man front for the Rebels. Wesson from the shotgun. Going to look to throw left side. Pass caught in Rebel territory at the 49. The hit in... Wrestle down immediately is Denson. They pick up uh, five or so on that play, left with third and four. Yep, the sophomore and the senior did pretty good. Looks like, uh, looks like Joshua Gray took one to the chest. He's still, yeah, he's still a little bit uh, feeling that, feeling that one. Squirrely. And Coach they're going to bring in Mathen Weaver to yeah, that's pretty good. make sure he's okay. Two receivers to each side from the left hash on third and four. Handoff goes to Wilkerson, fighting Good ahead, job. fighting, going to get a last little bit of effort, strain forward past the 45 to pick up the first down. Well, that was just second effort. Yep. He got that extra yard and a half. Yeah, you got to just tip your cap to the young man yep. there. He knew what he had to get, and he was determined to get it. Yep. 
So he had he had Joiner, Kemp, and Bobo hanging on him. Yeah. Ball. It was defensed well. It just ball at the leak 45. With three wide receivers. They'll run a play fake. Oh, throw, and it's nearly intercepted. Harkins almost <laughs> had one in the first half. He deflected and he did it again there. Oh, he had man. been a quarter of a beat earlier. He'd be wow. running the, to the end zone. The one, right now. the one in the first half. I'll, you look at film. Coach, say, coach will tell him you should have had that one. That, that was just an excellent play to get there. He he read that all the way. Three fifty-eight to go in this third quarter. Presented by Eastside Pawn and Gun. Fifty-five twenty-eight. Leak in front, but he's drinking driving. Handoff Loper, who's back in the game, and the Rebels get him high, wrestle him down at about the 42-yard line. Pick up of three, perhaps four. They're going to give him a nice spot to the 40. No, they're going to put it back at the 42. Yeah. So third and seven. Gain of three on the play. Joshua Gray back in the game. He's feeling better. Just takes his spot at right cornerback. Third down, hard count. Rebels... Stay disciplined. Look like some linebackers were going to come up the middle. Clock winding under 320. Wesson gets it out of his hands quickly, right side. Oh, was that at the 43? Going up to the close to the first down on a play. I'm not sure it wasn't a one hopper to Nicholas Wesson. Mm. I think he uh, scooped that one off the grass, Scott. I'm going to. I'm going to agree with that. I do not have my glasses on, but when I do, I'll look at it like it looked like it hopped to me. And I'm looking, I'm not looking through the dirty window in front of me. <laughs> I'm just looking around the, the door on the side. Well, they're going to call it a catch and bring out the chains to measure. And the officiating crew, I think, missed that one. That many sets of eyes, and they all get it wrong. The chains are stretched wow. enough for a Patriot first down with three minutes to play third quarter. Well, you just got to play, play uh, through plays like yep. this, you know. Um, the greatest coach said each each play has a life of its own, and when it dies, bury it <laughs> and yep, keep on play fighting. the next one. That's right. This is their longest drive of the game. Has to be. Shotgun set, three receivers. Handoff, Loper. He's hit. Camden Marble hanging on to that left leg for dear life until help arrives in the form of Grayson McDonald and, and Tyler Winstead at the 31, and they get four on first down. Tonight's broadcast powered by Central Electric Power Association. Loper goes back to the sideline, replaced by Wilkerson, the running back. Game not being played at the pace it was in the second no. quarter, that's for sure. No. Keeper uh, from the quarterback there you and go. Camden Marble meets him in the hole. Yep. Good, good open field tackle there right in the, in the pit. What's that a long four? You've got met by Camden Marble at the 28-yard line. Should be third and four. They put an H back to the right. Shotgun set. They like to run it. Wilkerson yep. there. Got the first down straight up the middle, and he will outrace the pursuit for a touchdown. And that covered 28 yards. You know, the last few times that kid's run the ball, he just he just put his nose up in the hole. That time, he, he a little more vertical. He, he waited for just a moment. The linebacker committed to a block, and he, he went the opposite way. That was, a good, that, was, that was a good play by their fullback. Extra point attempt coming up here from Toler Logan, the senior kicker. Hold, kick. It's up away. It's good. 140 to go. And it's 55-35, leak ahead by 20, back in 60 seconds. West Side Body Shop says, let's face it, stuff happens. 
And when it does, they can take care of damage as small as a chip in your windshield, all the way up to full collision services. Insurance claims are always welcome too. Just be sure your first stop is West Side Body Shop in Philadelphia. They also specialize in truck accessories, including toolboxes, visors, Nerf bars, and wenches. They make your ride look cool. West Side Body Shop, just off Beacon Street on Waterview Lane, right behind the Huddle House in Philadelphia. Moore's Pharmacy in Carthage, Sebastopol, and Walnut Grove appreciate you, their customers. We have a beautiful selection of gifts with free gift wrapping. We are one of the only pharmacies around to offer compounding and woman's hormone replacement therapy. Moore's Pharmacy accepts all insurance, including Medicaid. Our two-lane drive through and prescription synchronization will make your visit very convenient. Come see us. We have the shortest wait time in town and a professional staff to assist you. Moore's Pharmacy, Highway 16, Carthage. Boswell Media Sports. East Rankin trailing 55-35. Onside kick fielded very well by Ben Jackson at the Leak 48-yard line. So great field position for Leak. After Scott was the long, we saw the longest East Rankin drive of the evening. Yes, uh, five and a half minutes or so, and, and that was that was recovered well by yeah. Ben Jackson, a senior wide receiver, defensive line, long snapper slash shortstop, uh, <laughs> as he fielded that very well. Seventy-three yards on that five and a half minute drive, twenty-eight yards straight up the middle, touchdown, first of the night for uh, Wilkerson, Liam Wilkerson. Extra point was good. That's a performance therapy reset. 55-35 as Mathen Weaver takes first down carry into East Ranka territory. Gets spun around, stays on his feet. Stumbles past the 40 toward the 36-yard line before going down on the far side. That's a gain of 16 and a Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first down. They'll mark him at the 37. Under 90 seconds to play in the third quarter. It has gone by a lot quicker than that 49-point second quarter. <laughs> yes, sir. And the 40-minute halftime. Wow. Which you should get fined for that, I just got to say. <laughs> Heavy set here, handoff, sweeping left side. Weaver again, 35, and gets grabbed around the legs, taken down at the 33, picks up about three yards, second and seven for L.A. Under 50 seconds to play. Leak's not in a hurry now, up 20 points in the final yeah. minute of the third quarter. They'll move Ben Jackson to tight end on the left side. Go play action, looking deep. Wide open is, is Matthew Nowell, catches it at the five, and that's, that's six for the Rebels from 32, or excuse me, 33 yards away. Rebel touchdown is presented by Weaver Texan Accounting. He, uh, you know, you can, when you have a good uh, reception at a wedding, you can pick which cake you want to eat. He could have chose the left touchdown or the right <laughs> touchdown, and he happened to go to to Matthew Nowell right there. But he, he had uh, Ben Jackson on the other side open as well. Leak has broken the 60 barrier. Trying to add one more here off the toe of Nowell. And his kick is good with 30 seconds to go in the quarter. We'll keep it here. Rebels 62, East Rankin 35. Now, Mr. Palmer Tree, you've been with League Academy for a while. When's the last time we broke 60? <laughs> Ooh, I can't tell you right off the top of my head. I have not seen That's a 60 That's our third quarter game. trivia tonight yep. for you. <laughs> hey, I do have a trivia question I'm going to ask here. This is a good okay. time to ask it. Okay. It, it, was, it was a leftover in the back of the fridge from last week. I forgot to ask it last week. Okay. So it has to do with Pillow Academy, our opponent last week. Okay. And uh, fans of of the uh, Battle for the Golden Egg are have an advantage in this one. So okay. there have not been a whole lot of famous uh, college football players who've come out of Greenwood League Academy, but I want the uh, answer is a young man who came out of Pillow Academy League. And what Pillow Academy alumnus led Ole Miss on a last-minute game-winning touchdown drive to beat Mississippi State and propel the Rebels into the Motor City Bowl? 
Oh. In what year? Yes, and already Gaten. Well, see, I'm not going to give the year yet because <laughs> Gaten Bell's already stuck his head around the the uh, door, and he knows the answer. Here's the kickoff brought to you by Moore's Pharmacy. Kick deep to the 15-yard line. Henry, as he has all night, comes up to left uh -oh. hash, tries to get to the outside, Good but tackle. Camden Marble oh. hits him at the 28 and brings him down. Good he thought he stayed up on his feet, and so the action continued into the near sideline where the Rebels are. I'll ask the question again for those of you who are not as quick as Gaden Bell. I knew somebody like Gaden would, uh, would get that right. What Pillow Academy alum, the Rebels opponent last week, who they beat 37-20, to 20, uh, led Ole Miss on a game-winning touchdown drive that uh, in the closing seconds that uh, propelled the Rebels into the Motor City Bowl? I have no idea. Unless and it could be. I can say I know him and I know his family. So that's why that question came to mind. 19 seconds left in the quarter. First down for East Rankin. Rolling out right side is Wesson. Now he's going to tuck the ball under his right arm. Run, get hit at the 33. Bounce off a tackler. Zig and zag his way up to the 44-yard line of 43 before he's brought down. Did the other coach give you an answer on that? next door my guess a, yes now, i'm an you alabama fan okay okay would it be stewart a guy named stewart that was his first name really yes yeah, so wow. you're kind of filling it in here <laughs> the final three seconds of the quarter are going to lapse here and we'll give the answer for those who don't know it uh, when we come back at the start of the fourth rebels 62 patriots 35 back in 60. i sure do like my new hunting rifle i bought it over at ozark ag when i went in they had such a great selection Took me a while to make up my mind. I have it sighted in now, and I'm ready for the big bucks. Tomorrow I'm going back over to Ozark Ag and stock up on ammo. While I'm there, I just might check out those deer stands. Hey, honey, I know you're listening. Make sure you shop for me at Ozark Ag. They're on Highway 16 West in Carthage. TNK Farms Wood Miser is Mississippi's Wood Miser Sawmill Equipment Dealership. TNK Farms Wood Miser sells the complete Wood Miser equipment line from small personal sawmills to the industrial equipment lineup. TNK Farms stocks parts and has experienced factory trained service technicians with both in shop and mobile service available. See TNK Farms Wood Miser to start your sawmill business today. Credit cards are accepted for all services. Like them on Facebook, TNK Farms Woodmiser, just off Highway 25 at 1128 Liberty Road, Louisville, 662-803-4332. Boswell Media Sports. First down pass, fourth quarter starts incomplete from the 42-yard line. Wesson trying to go deep left side. Missed his receiver, Nicholas Wesson, incomplete. We declare... Gaden Bell, the winner of InSports Trivia <laughs> tonight with the immediate coming uh, answer coming around the corner, and a couple of people texted that in as well. Stuart Patridge was the, the quarterback, war, war number one. And the handoff goes to Wilkerson on second and ten, and he's get rips off a big run for ten-plus all the way down to the Rebel 42-yard line, so they get about 15 on that play. They're in the hurry-up offense, too. And moving quickly, Leak 50, excuse me, Leak 62, Rebels 35, <laughs> Patriots 35. Wilkerson oh, okay. gets hit in the backfield by John Donovan, and he is going nowhere. Tackle for loss. Great play by the senior defensive yeah. end, Donovan. Yeah, read that, read that play, fought through a block, um, and there was no getting away this time. Some of those tackle drills we talked about at halftime. Play loses two yards, second and 12. Three wide outs left. One to the right. Wilkerson, the running back next to Wesson. Looks left, looks left, looks left. Now the pocket breaking down, oh. and he's going to be sacked. The 48-yard line. Yep. Uh, Garrett Joyner forced a fumble. Quarterback recovered it uh, as he was going down. Almost a turnover. So, Stuart Patridge, the correct answer for tonight's in sports trivia question. And I knew that answer, and I'll tell you how. Of all my years of watching football, I don't think I've ever seen Pillow play. But we've got somebody, uh, Corey Burns, played last year, and I'll finish that thought right after this play. 
as they drop back. Back to throw. Screen just blown up at yeah. midfield. Camden Marble read it all the way. Loss of two on the play back to midfield. And it's fourth down yeah. and about 19 to go. And are they, are for they're the going Patriots. for it. They and you have to down 62-35 yes. if you want to stay competitive. Clock winding down toward 10 minutes to play. Fourth quarter presented by the Neshoba County Co-op. Four wide outs in the formation. Keep the running back back to block, but here come the Rebels in pursuit. Stepping up oh. is Wesson. He escapes, running to the 45-40, and angles out of bounds short of the first down line, but a flag comes oh. in late, and the Rebels are going to get penalized and give up the first down. Oh, gracious. So tempting, and he was about four, two or three yards short where he went out if not for that late hit, personal foul. It would have been turnover on downs because he was, as Scott said, about five yards short yeah. of the mm. stick. But walk the ball down to the 20-yard line, and it's first and 10 ERA, 940 to play. Ball at the left hash, four wide outs, rolling out to the wide side is Wesson. Puts it in the air, into the near sidelines, incomplete. Good play on Joshua Gray to bat that ball, ball away. Good coverage out on the corner. Low the intended target. Second and ten. Stops the clock with nine and a half minutes to play. Rebels return home next week. Senior night, with a very talented Lamar Raider squad coming to town. TNK Farms Wood Miser pregame starts at 6.15, 7 o'clock kickoff. Looking left is Wesson throwing. There's a chance to pick it off. Picked off at the five by Charlie Brantley coming far sideline. 20, 30, 40. And he'll get wrapped up and taken down at about the 45, 46-yard line. And the drive ends after Charlie Brantley's interception. He had one last week against Pillow as well, Scott. Yep. And it couldn't happen at a, at a, at a better time. The um, – uh, uh, now, Corey, Corey Burns, offensive lineman for last year, now that he's central, I met his dad, Mr. Boyd. Yeah, Colton Burns, yeah. Colton. Yeah. Anyway, he's uh, – he, he, he is, he's the one that sends the scores in and helps update us. And uh, I would not have known the gentleman from uh, Pillow from unless he would have sent me the text. So, boy, I appreciate you sending in these scores. Uh, man, you've been, uh, <laughs> you've been a blessing to us, buddy. Rebels take over at the 46 after the INT. Wilcox takes a shotgun snap. Lots of time. Going to throw it deep. Wide open at the 15 is Matthew oh, Bell. He catches it. Had to stretch out and... Goes to the grass, catching it at the nine. He had nobody between him and the goal line, but he just had to extend himself a little bit too much to stay on his feet. But that's a Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first and ten and a beautiful passing catch. About 46 yards on that. First and goal. First and goal, L.A. from the nine. Keeper, I mean, excuse me, handoff for Weaver left side, and he goes up the numbers left side, and that's six more for the Rebels. Touchdown for Leak, presented by Weaver Tax and Accounting. That's Weaver's second touchdown of the night. He caught one in the mm -hmm. second quarter, and now he rushes one in from the nine for six. They'll line up to go for two, try to get to 70. They'll bring Nowell around left to right. He's wide got open it. the right side. If they throw it in there, oh. he's got it, and it went off his hands incomplete. Leak 68, East Rankin 35 with 8.53 to play in the ball game. Boy, they had that one <laughs> right on the hands. 103 points. Is that right? No, 113 
You're right, 103. 103 for the night, yes. Wow. <laughs> it just Mercy. keeps on rolling. 68-35, under nine minutes to play. Moore's Pharmacy kickoff coming up. Rebels had that little uh, slot man short out pattern. Oh, man. So wide open. It, just catch it and fall. Oh. A lot of the crowd has thinned out at Moody Davis Field after homecoming festivities. Of course, a lot of folks came to see their kids or grandkids mm -hmm. uh, perform in the halftime extravaganza of 40 minutes. But I tell you what, Leak Academy traveled well tonight. Their, their oh, stands yeah. were full. Leak folks are still here and enjoying seeing some kind of show. Now they've seen the action. The, the first quarter <laughs> was the most boring quarter. Uh, yeah, there were only 21 that, points scored in that quarter, saying. 27 scored in the third, but it was 49 put up on the board in the th second quarter. Nothing but thunder and lightning since then. Matthew Nowell coming forward, swings the leg, sends it to Carlisle at the 14. He comes up middle of the field, spins off one tackler, but now the pile stands him up. Just at the about the 33-yard line, Dylan Massey, Braden Hall, Matthew Nowell, Cade McGraw coming out of that pile. A plethora of seniors yep. in that pile. Kickoff teams got their tongues hanging out. I tell you, <laughs> goodness, kicker's going to have to have treatment tomorrow morning. Leak 68, East Rankin 35. Got a score for you here, boss. Final, Simpson 28, Lamar 27. Simpson upsets Lamar, turns the district uh, race mm. in an interesting direction. Next two opponents for the Rebels there, Lamar next week, then Simpson. From the shotgun, Wesson hands off to Wilkerson, and bodies collide, Kobe Kemp. Camden Marble, Grayson McDonald stopped the run after a gain of one. Gage Bennett coming into the ball game. Some subs coming in for the Rebels. 56, Allen Olivo in the game. Braden Welch coming in. Dylan Massey in the game. Also Jake Rudolph coming in at safety. Caden Chipley in the game at yeah. linebacker. Alex McDill at defensive end. Handoff on second and nine. Goes to the running back. Fights to the 35. And Rebels wrestle him down there. Kobe Kemp leading the charge there. Cade McGraw, freshman Cade linebacker, 5'10", 158. Had him by the feet. Yep. We'll try our Cade best McGraw to call some of these new names out. Reese Atkinson coming in the game as well, coming in for Tyler Winstead. So it's fresh 11, clean uniforms out there. The final seven minutes, 25 seconds, fourth quarter clock tip, ticking down. Fourth quarter presented by the Neshoba County Co-op, two by two receivers. Keeper for Wesson. He is hit, dragged down at the 40, a couple of yards short of the first down marker. Again, McGraw gets up out of the pile. Yeah. Uh, Reese Atkinson, freshman, helping on the tackle. Braden Johnson coming in for Gage Bennett on the defensive yep. line. So third, four, excuse me, fourth down and one. Timeout called for reasons I don't know. Maybe a measurement? The officials. Yeah, they gave him a really nice spot, and they're going to eyeball it and say first down, first and ten. Uh, uh, that's what I say. What? Not sure that official had the right eye open as he was looking down the line. He keeps no. saying again and again and again first down with his right arm. Uh, I don't know how you get that to work. Uh, but it's first and ten. They start the play clock. Thankfully, the game clock ticking down under uh, towards six and a half minutes to go. 
long night in Pelahatchee. Three wide receivers. Hand off to the running back, Logan Hall. He doesn't get, uh, well, he gets to the 44. Atkinson, McGraw. Olivo. O o uh, Olivo, Olivo get in there and stop him. Jimmy Adams checking into the game now. Yeah. Second and six. Ball right between the 44 and 45 yard line. Coach is clearing the bench in a good way. Wesson, freshman quarterback, looks into the sideline, running back. Hall at his left. They throw it out oh. to the left boundary. Get a few yards, but not enough for the first down. Pass complete to Brennan McDill for East Rankin. Braden Hall over there. Rebels run John David Gill out, out onto the field along with Mason Middleton. I think that's the first time I've seen Bobo taken out. Yeah, this just year. about. He's, <laughs> he is an Iron Man yes. <laughs> defensive line. Line of scrimmage, the 48-yard line, third and two. Unless they call it a first. No, they're going to let him play third down. Shotgun set, handoff Hall. He's going to get the first down and then get second effort forward to the Rebel 38. Warner Young checking into the game at safety, replacing Braden Welch. Rebels running uh, Braden second, Johnson. third teamers in yeah. and out. Four forty to go. First and ten, Patriots. Rebels going to cruise to a victory here, leading sixty-eight thirty-five. Going out to the right side of the boundary is Hall. He's going to get the first down. Mason Middleton will grab him around the shoulder pads and escort him out of bounds. Yep. But Hall picks up the first down. Sophomore running back plays with a lot of effort there. You know, the result of hard practice and determination is not only a win on Friday night, but the opportunity for some of your underclassmen to get, yep, get these game Live reps yes. here. Speaking of reps, Jaden Kemp, sophomore, comes into the game, gets down there at defensive tackle. They'll run Hall again. This time, Gage oh. Bennett hits him. And then oh. 26, Cade McGraw makes sure he doesn't uh, ping pong off the <laughs> tackle there and take off into the open field. Throws him down for a loss of one. Excellent tackle. Cade McGraw, the freshman. Second and 11. Uh, 36 yard line, the line of scrimmage, 316 and clock ticking. Stay with us for, it will be a short, but uh, content laden. <laughs> Three uh, Woodstock furniture post game, run goes into the center of the line. Bennett and McGraw make the tackle on Logan Hall. Pick up a four, third and six. Or pick up a five for th a third and six. Tanner Johnson in the ball game at defensive end. Right now he is uh, 23 of 31 for 24. two and a half minutes to play. We'll give you some stats on QB1 in just a second. They're being totaled up here over the right. Pass along the line of scrimmage. Not much gain there on the pass to McDill. It's Braden Welch and Gage Bennett lead the pursuit out there along with Jack Johnston for the Rebels. Third, fourth down and four. Line of scrimmage of the 29. What what stats uh, did you add up real quick there for Unoffic Wilcox? Unofficially, 23 of 31 for 319 yards. He had he was tw uh, 18 of 24. Let me double check this. 18 of 24 in the first half for 203. In the second half, if I haven't missed anything, five of Seven, so that'd be 23 of 31. Three Run goes on fourth down, and it's going to be a tackle for loss. 
Gage Bennett gets Hall trying to sweep around the left side. The Rebels will take over with just 88 seconds to play in the Neshoba County Co-op fourth quarter. So unofficially, 23 of 31 through the year, 319, four touchdowns, no interceptions, and then one, two, three touchdown runs tonight for sophomore quarterback George Wilcox. And only one <clears throat> sack tonight yes. early in the third quarter. Rebels run out the final, 90 and, seconds. And had one 43-yard 40 touchdown pass for a touchdown nullified by a penalty. Leak will put Warner Young in at quarterback. I think that's John David Gill at running back. It is. Gill gets the carry. Finds some room up the middle, 45, 50. Oh, good and he tackle. gets... Tackled from behind, a touchdown saving tackle inside the 45. The Rebels get a big gain. Ball marked at the 43 with a minute 20 to play. And that's just handed off behind a guard and go. And look, blocking opened up. Central Mississippi Animal Clinic first down. Young hands off to. Gill again, he's got room to run. Gets across the 35. He's got about nine yards on first down. Rebels will have to run one more play. And then we can, you know, we're still at the, we're at a point there where you can put out the fire and put the dogs <laughs> in the wagon. But uh, Yes, sir. Pick up the chickens and head can. to the house. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Heavy set to the left. Gill takes the handoff up the middle. He's still dragging the defender across the 30, gets the first down, down to the 28, and what should be the final play of this District 2 ball game. Leak's going to win it 68 to 35. Highest scoring game I have ever called in my entire life on planet <laughs> Earth. And the longest halftime in my of my lifetime in the history of planet Earth. And the <laughs> coolest game we've we've called all year to this point. Yes, cool and comfortable. We've got the Woodstock Furniture Post game coming up as the clock has hit zero. Stay with us. Leak Academy football continues. We were celebrating a birthday, so we took the family out to dinner at a steakhouse. You may have known it as Lee's, but now it's a new building with a new name. The same great chef and owner, Artie Reed, and Hometown Prime. My beef filet was cooked perfectly, and we can't wait to go back. Steak, seafood, the best sweet tea, and of course, homemade desserts. Delicious! For daily specials and hours, Google Hometown Prime and like them on Facebook. Hometown Prime is ready for you. Highway 21, Sebastopol. Now, Bob, when we started the Bring Your Kid to Work Day, this wasn't exactly what we had in mind. I'm sorry, but they're my babies. We're about to go grab lunch and then head to the farm. Well, where are you headed? Rosebud General Store out there in Rosebud on Highway 487 East. Nothing but the best for my babies. They got everything you need for your farming family. Well, your calf sure is sweet. Does she have a name? That there's the cow patty. Whoa, whoa, let me get this straight. You named your cow patty? No, sir. It's what you stepped in. Ew. Rosebud General Store, Highway 487 East. Did you know people overpay by up to 50% for individual health insurance? David Barham Insurance will save you that. Plus, David has the best rates on the market for Medicare supplements. The solution is not on the internet or far away. It's right here in Carthage. David Barra, a local insurance agent you can trust. Make sure you have the best coverage and price. Call David Barr, 601-941-1280, on the north side of the square in Carthage. When dealing with something as complex as taxes and payroll can be, you can turn to Weaver Tax and Accounting to make things easier. Their professional staff works diligently to make sure your business and personal returns are complete and finished in a timely manner. Weaver Tax and Accounting will also execute your bookkeeping and payroll, bringing you the best in tax services since 1979. Weaver Tax and Accounting, 20 South Street, Sebastopol and 109 Chadwick Avenue in Walnut Grove. Register to win a 70-inch smart TV during the end of summer savings sale at Woodstock Furniture Value Center. 
bedrooms plus free mattress $7.98. Living rooms just $6.98. Dining sets only $3.98. And queen mattresses $1.99. Kings $2.99. Plus, it's all backed by our low price and same-day delivery guarantee with no credit needed and no money down. Only at Woodstock Furniture Value Center in Meridian, Philadelphia, and WoodstockValueCenter.com. Boswell Media Sports. The Woodstock postgame coming to you from Pelahatchee, Moody Davis Field. Final score, Leak Academy 68, East Rankin Academy 35. As the Leak Academy Rebels improved to 3-5 and five on the season, they've won three of their last four, and they're now 1-1 one and one in the district. The Patriots are 2-6 and 0-3. And oh and uh, footnote on that, East Rankin has not won a district ball game since 2014. So that streak uh, continues tonight. The Rebels and the Patriots uh, had quite a first half. It was, well, what was it, 42-28 at the half. I'm not going to repeat all that stuff from the first half. I'm just going to say, you remember what I said <laughs> during the halftime? Well, let's pick up there. East, um, Leak got the opening kickoff of the third quarter. Looked like they were going to have to go three and out and punt, but um, roughing the kicker penalty extended the drive. And the Rebels got it down inside the five on a pass from Wilcox to Nowell. And George ran it in from the one with 8.55 to go in the third, and it was 49-28. Leak uh, got it right back as East Rankin went three and out, and then the punt on fourth down, snap back to the punter was botched. Punter was tackled back at the one-yard line, and it just took one play for Wilcox to uh, put his nose in there for the third time. Uh, Touchdown rush of the night. Extra point was blocked. 55-28 with seven minutes to go in the third. East Rankin scored for the final time with about a minute and a half to go in the quarter as uh, Wilkerson took off on a 28-yard jaunt up the middle, and it was 55-35. But Leak added two more touchdowns, one with 30 seconds to go in the third. Uh, in the third, Matthew Nowell caught a beauty of a 33-yard pass from Wilcox, and then final score. Uh, put up on the scoreboard tonight was Math and Weaver on a nine-yard run at the 8.53 mark, 68-35, the final. Um, Scott, a uh, few, uh, couple of stats, and then we'll we'll make a couple of observations before we get out of here. Uh, rushing, um, uh, 22 for the night for 139 yards, and you've already discussed the touchdowns. These are unofficial, by the way. Uh, passing is uh, 23 of 31, no interceptions, 319 yards. That's 45 plays, 458. That's uh, 10 point, some 10 yards a play for the night. Um, I don't know about time of possession, and like I said, these are unofficial, uh, but certainly a um, lot of yards through the air tonight. Great, we've got Coach Brian Pickens joining us up here. Appreciate him. Uh, Trotting up the stands here to join us at the Woodstock Furniture post game, and we'll go straight to him as uh, we've had a late night here with a nothing like a forty minute halftime to stretch that's things right. out. And that's right. I'm yes. going to check. I'm going to check with a lawyer friend of mine. I think that's against the law, but uh, we'll find <laughs> out. But hey, uh, Coach, oh, what a night! Offensive fireworks. Uh, we had some trouble defensively in the second quarter, but I think. Uh, got our feet back under us the second half and put them away. Yeah, well, wow. I, you know, I just looked at your phone, went off. I didn't know it was almost 10 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> uh, like I said, I didn't realize that it was that late. I knew, I knew, you know, it was a long time, but I didn't know it was that late. But, no, you know, you know, I was proud of this, this group. You know, we came out, and that's what we've been talking about. You know, for the last few weeks, it's coming out and making plays. And I'll be honest with you, it was, you know, it was heritage. They, they really started clicking. And then it, you know, even Kapaya yeah, was a loss, but but you could see that you could see things starting to really uh, develop, and uh, you know, and I told them that night I felt like that they weren't coming out ready to have fun, and now you're seeing this group they come out offensively, uh, I think they're having a lot of fun, I think they realize the the potential that they have, and they're utilizing it. Uh, you know, we we didn't I don't know how many possessions we had, but we didn't punt, we did punt, and. You know, my man Seth Martin uh, pulled the pulled the uh, uh, rough and the kicker there. He did get a little rough, but but he uh, you know he laid out like he's supposed to and gave us the first down and let us go on down, and that was huge. You know, that's what we talked about. Uh, we did have a long halftime. We were able to do a lot of evaluating the film and just uh, I think we scouted the next week's opponent. You know, I was in there. We had enough time to do that, but uh, but they. Uh, 
you know, we talked about we had to keep that intensity up, and that's tough. After a long halftime mm-hmm. like that, keeping that intensity up, I'm glad we did get the ball. I'm glad we were able to defer, get the ball back. Seth, uh, like, like I said, you know, people don't really pay attention to a, to a rough punter, but, you know, that's that that's that's huge right there. Uh, he, you know, he got the punt off and got laid out, and uh, so we got the free first down, and then we, we capitalized on it. And that's what that's what we had to do. Uh, we had so many big plays. I, you know, I'd love to sit there and say, you know, I saw now we'll go down on one or Weaver, but you know, the whole group was just, you know, uh, when you start looking at all these receivers now, a Weaver, uh, Ben Jackson, uh, uh, you know, Harkins, Jack Harkins. Uh, you know, even, uh, you know, a, a major coming out of the backfield. You know, we threw it one time to uh, Charlie coming out of backfield. You know, this group's, uh, like I said, they're a they're wide open, fun group, and, and they're really, really embracing it. And uh, so, uh, like I said, a lot of fun to watch them play. Uh, you know, they were they were a big group. And I know, you know, we talked a little bit, you know, in the, in the, in the coach's show, pregame show, about their size. And I'll be honest with you, I would have told you they look like a college line. And I probably would have just said, really like college line because it sounds like a good thing for a coach to say. But but standing out there when we did uh, pregame and uh, they walked across that field, uh, I think some of our kids were, you know, touching their chest there. And, you know, that was a big group of youngins up front. And they did a good job with them. You know, yeah. uh, they got behind them, started, you know, started just kind of uh, chipping away. And, you know, you're trying to get around them big bodies and then, you know, something would pop loose. And yeah. I thought our kids did a great job, like I said, offensively. We, we answered back, and then they would answer back, and then we answered back. And sometimes you get in these shootouts, and, you know, I mean, I, 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 I always get excited during a shootout. You know, uh, Coach Burns always gets on me. He said, you know, the person I think having fun right now. But I but I like <laughs> I like that action. I like playing defense, don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, but, but when the offense can respond, because, you know, I've seen a lot of games. We don't really get on the offense when, you know, we're struggling, but the defense is keeping us in the game. You know, sometimes the offense has got to keep you in the game. So, but I thought, I thought all in all, then our defense did come back out, had a huge stop. Uh, special teams, uh, you know, we had talked about the way they were going to punt, and we kind of did some different things this week. And sure enough, we were able to capitalize, uh, you know, on that on that punt that we got on the one-yard line and score off of it. And that put us up four touchdowns, and then we really were able to, to, to pull away. And I thought we were consistent on – uh, kickoff coverage as well. Uh, yes. Kept putting it in the same place generally and same distance, and uh, guys kept their lanes. We didn't, uh, you know, that you think just that many times you kick off in a game, the other team's bound to break yeah, one. Something's going to say something. Yeah. <laughs> something's going to break loose, but they didn't. They did, uh, you know, and that's, you know, that's what we talk about. I, I, you know, I give them a little pep speech before they run down the field sometimes, and uh, I told them, you know, we got to go cover. Don't let them have nothing big. And uh, they did just that. Now it was, and, you know, now his leg really looked strong tonight. You know, he was booming some deep ones, and uh, uh, we were going and covering it. And uh, like I said, had a great uh, kickoff coverage there in the second half. I thought, I thought in the second half, uh, you know, this week we saw some things. I uh, felt like we got a little more physical this week uh, in practice, and uh, we talked about carrying it over to the game. And I really thought that second half when we got comfortable and got to really go, and I thought we saw some – you know, more physical play out of our guys, and started with that that uh, that, that big hit by uh, Kobe Kemp, and then and then it you know led over to our our, our next defensive stop. Well, uh, to wrap it up, I know this is one to enjoy, and uh, then there's plenty of work to do with final two regular season ball games coming up. We return home next week. We get. Uh, Lamar, who was beaten by Simpson by one point tonight. What was I that 28 that. I heard 27? that coming up stands. Yeah, 28 27. Simpson beats Lamar. And then, of course, uh, we'll wrap it up with Simpson. So it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be exciting uh, home stretch for this regular well, season. It, and what's exciting is I, I'm going to say this about this group. You know, when when you were sitting at 0 and 4, there was a lot of ways you could have gone. And, and you know, and you've heard me say this, and I, I'm going to say it right now. This group, when they come out to practice, you can't tell the difference between even when they were 0 and 4 between an 0 and 4 team and a 4 and 0 team. I, I'm serious. They come out every day ready to go. Uh, they they you know they actually keep practice fun, and it kind of allows me to keep practice a little more fun. You know, because, you know, three days of, of, of hitting, you know, can sometimes get to you. But we <laughs> keep it fun. Uh, they allow that because they, they steadily try to get better each and every week. And they're just an exciting group. And, and I, like I said, I'm so doggone proud of them coming from, from, from where we came to. Now we're three and five. And now we've got a chance, you know, these last two games really really are starting to mean something to us. And yeah. so that, that's, that gives credit to this, to this group of young men. And I think the way we've been throwing the ball the last four ball games, uh, it's going to get a lot of people's uh, attention uh, here, and deservedly so. So uh, great job uh, by these young men and uh, 
and looking forward to these last two ball games. Uh, so p p plenty out in front of uh, this team for this season. That's right. That's right. You know, we're, you know, we're excited, uh, get, you know, get back there into the office and start, you know, start looking for next week. You know, we're going to enjoy this a little bit, but, you know, the older you get, the more you know you better look for next week. So we're <laughs> going to, you know, us old men are going to get looking for next week. We want these, these, these kids to enjoy themselves over the weekend and feel good about it and come back in Monday ready to work. Congratulations, Coach. You and the team getting this 68-35 victory over East Rankin. And uh, we'll, talk to you, uh, we'll talk to you next week as we've got the Lamar Raiders coming to town. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Y'all take care. Coach Brian Pickens joining us on the Woodstock Furniture Post Game. Appreciate him coming up. And uh, hand the headset back to Scott before we wrap things up. Uh, well, Scott, we've seen uh, 103 <laughs> – points on the board tonight and that's uh that's the first that's something to think about for a while but uh sure has been fun it it was certainly the fireworks confetti um the uh geographic lessons that we learned <laughs> and um and and I, I i really pick up on what coach uh harkin says um having fun playing the game of football there's so many lessons to be learned and it, you certainly got to take it serious um, but as a as a student athlete, being able to come and, and work and strive and learn and stretch and strain, but have fun at the same time. Uh, and I tell you what, uh, these are young men of character. You know, we, we've seen, you know, maybe a, a touch of more aggression, but uh, uh, block, you know, run to the punter and stuff like that. But this is a this is a good group of young men yeah. uh, that, that's, that's playing Friday after Friday. Well, thank you, Scott Engel. Good to have you back. We look forward to – Next couple of weeks and what lays uh, what lies ahead beyond that. We yep. appreciate Billy Steen in the studio. John Alden Crosby on the action camera. Always appreciate him. And uh, we appreciate a whole team at Boswell Sports, including our award-winning producer-director, Breck Riley. So for all of them, I'm Philip Palmertree saying thanks to all of you for watching on the Edinburgh Drugs video stream and for listening on Cruising 98 tonight. If you don't watch, you don't listen, none of this matters, but we appreciate the fact that you do. And we'll join you next week, Lord willing, from Madden. Until then, I'm Philip Palmertree signing off from Pelahatchee, where the Rebels get a big 68-35 district win over East Rankin tonight. Until we're together again next week, good night.